I am. I'm scared. <laughs> Good. All right, call this meeting to order. This is a regular town board meeting for the town of East Troy, July 10th, 6.30 p.m. Roll call, Karkowski here. Wales here. Wraith here. Church here. Walker here. All right, Kim, are all our postings in order for tonight's meeting? Yes. All right, approval of the agenda. Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, I ran right by that. <laughs> Trying to get our meetings shorter, that didn't help. All right, uh, okay, approval of the agenda. I don't have any changes. Any changes, anybody? I would just. Um, suggest that we don't need the communications committee on the minutes approval anymore because there is no committee to approve the last meetings. <laughs> uh, the minutes are in our packet? There are none. No. I think she means listed on the agenda correct. under five. Under five. Oh, yeah, that should have been removed, so that should be struck. <laughs> All right, anything else? Okay, anything? All right, and I'm going to repeat your motion, Bill. Motion to approve the agenda as Wait. amended. Okay. Second. And Barb, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, we have some minutes. Uh, the first one in the packet was Monday, May 8th. I seen one thing right at the beginning. So we approved those last month. So what happened is I was putting in a different one, and I missed it, and I knew I could listen to the recording and get it, or watch the video and get it. Kim didn't have anything recorded either, okay, and Jim ahead. actually questioned it, and we, there was no motion and approval. Everybody voted there yes, but there was yeah, no motion and a second. Okay, so that's why that's in here, out of order. Uh, I did have one thing, though, mm -hmm. on the one, two, third, the fourth paragraph, uh, motion by Supervisor Wales, second by uh, Supervisor Church to amend the agenda. I think that so that should be struck and should say to move item 90. It said so that move item that kind of reads a little. Should just say amend it to move it. Okay. Amend the agenda to move item. Okay. That's the only thing I've seen in there. Anybody? I saw on page three under the police report. Two, three, police report. Bullet point number three. Um, I just didn't maybe cross out the at the end of that line. A enormous asset to the department and to, oh no, that's right, to the chief himself. No, nope, I'm It's sorry. okay, nothing there. Yep, makes sense. Okay. All right, anybody else? Anything? Different? No, no, to no, himself no. as yeah. the chief. chief. As chief. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the department. And to the, okay, so get rid of the. Yeah. Get rid of the. the yeah. Gotcha. And All right. Isn't it the reinserted prayer to, to the himself chief. as chief? To himself as chief. <laughs> no, that'd be right then to get rid of the the. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, anything else? Anybody? If not a motion to approve the minutes from May 8th. As amended. As amended. All right, do we have a second? A second. Michelle, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, then we have a plan commission meeting June 7th. Is it about the June? It takes an order. Oh, All right, two pager. Um, I, to me, I make a motion to approve the June 7th plan commission minutes as prepared. Second. Barb, second. Discussion. Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Special town board meeting June 12th. I had no marks on that one. I did not. Really good. All right. We need a motion to approve. I move that we approve the special town board meeting minutes of Monday, June 12th at 6 p.m. as presented. Right. Second. Michelle, second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. 
Uh, regular board meeting, June 12th. I made no marks. Anybody have any comments? That's six pages, plus the uh, licenses. I had on page three, under the Department of Public Works, about halfway down, looked into getting a permit from the DNR, but I think it would be everybody within a quarter mile would have to agree, well, versus Anyone anybody? within. Look, okay. the game, but anybody within a quarter mile would have to agree to it. And no one would have to. So, is there any change? It should be I everybody. Think it, I think everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Not anybody. Oh, everybody instead everybody. of anybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anything else? Anyone? Nope. Anything else? Barb, Bill? All right, motion. I move that we approve the town board meeting minutes for Monday, June 12th, 2023, as presented. Okay. As amended. As amended. Second. Uh, Chad, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay, that should be it for meeting minutes, correct? Good. Um, okay. The Treasurer's report for June 2023 receipts for $66,640.73, transfers for $509,000, interest earned was $402.51, balance as of May 31st was $13,732.91. Total funds were $589,776.15. Checks paid in June were $559,573.42, leaving a balance of $30,202.73 in the general checking account. All right, any questions from the board about the treasurer's report? I'll make a motion to approve the treasurer's report for June. July 2023. All right, do we have a second? second. Barb Church, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Hey, Kim, on your other, your written report, um, the loan quotes, you generally do three, right? For each I'm project. Sorry? On the loan quotes, you generally do three. I, I reach out to local banks that we've had relationships with. Some of them get back to me, some of them don't. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. There were three in the list of them. Yeah, yeah, three. Yeah. Like two days after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that was due. Yeah. yeah. And then um, the four year maintenance project. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's part of keeping the poll book up to date and current. Oh, okay. So the four year, every, actually it's done every two years, but anybody who hasn't voted for four years gets mailed a postcard. Mm -hmm. I believe we have 42 people that got mailed postcards. And the person that either returns me as undeliverable and then those people are struck. Otherwise, if mm -hmm. it comes to a person and they want to continue, they have to send the postcard and mail it back to me. And then I continue even though they haven't voted in a number of years. Okay, that's good. Interesting to know. Thank you. Right. Any other questions on Kim's report? Anything you want to add on your report? Okay, thank you. Uh, report of committees. Uh, my report uh, since the last meeting on June 15th, we had the uh, Wisconsin Towns Association Tri-County meeting in uh, Waterford. Uh, the guest speakers there were the three county administrators, uh, Racine, Kenosha, and Walworth County. It was um, very enlightening, um, and it was, uh, it was helpful. And then on uh, June 20th, we had a Tri-Troy meeting just before we had the meeting at the library. Um, and. Um, we were talking about what was going to be discussed uh, with the library, uh, and now there's a report on that uh, later on today here, and it's going to take statute changes and then upcoming projects, including the timing of um, uh, potential future referendums in the 
coordination between them, potentially the school and potentially the fire district, so we want to get ahead of that. And then on uh, June 27th, the ICC meeting was held in Elkhorn, and um, uh, I gave a report about the uh, efforts of the Tri-Troy Alliance, and uh, thankfully, uh, uh, Scott Seeger, who is no longer the president of the village, he he uh, helped with that presentation because he was, you know, he actually started it with with us six years ago, and um, also was discussion there at that meeting about the county study for fire and rescue services, you know, countywide. Uh, they came to a standstill about a year and a half ago, and now they're going to get uh, re-energized and take into account the mergers and acquisitions and things that occurred uh, since they got off that project. So that's the uh, meetings uh, that I attended there. Okay, uh, media IT report, Web Administrator Olson. I attached the proposed newsletter format on, to the documents that you have. Today I gave you a revised version because the copier was not playing nice when it was scanned in. So this is actually what the gray scale will look like. It's much lighter than you can receive. Um, it's my goal to maintain the two-page front and back format, as, at least for the fall and spring newsletters. I feel like we have more to say at that point. Um, I would suggest a virtual-only format in winter and summer as there's less information that will be communicated at that time due to the letter Kim historically submits with the tax bill. I feel this will be more economical for the town taxpayers and still bridge the gap with those residents that are less tax savvy. This change would also allow wiggle room in the budget to send out a postcard or single page newsletter if there's pressing agenda items that the town would like communicated in the spring and winter, like perhaps an open house once the police garage is open or something of that nature, and that would leave extra room in the budget. Um, in my printing and shipping research, I did discover that the Village of East Troy does not mail their newsletter and only provides virtual copies due to the cost. So it's kind of felt like we were kind of trying to keep up with how grand theirs was, and it was like comparing apples and oranges. So I want to make sure that we keep it kind of more within our budget and we scale some of the sizing back to make it maybe adjust the front and back if we are going to do four quarterly. So, so that we stay within our budget. We had budgeted for three a year. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I would say we did not refer to the village. Okay. Um, I spoke to Print, Pack, and Ship as well as Supervisor Vail and Supervisor Church. Um, they had some contact with them in the past, so they were a resource as well. They quoted us a 30 cents per page front and back to print black and white on the colored paper. Um, I did reach out to Minuteman Press to talk to them. I was talking to a Michelle Kreft I was looking for because she was the person on the invoice and she has not responded to me in like She's six messages. It's funny because I had the opposite experience. I know. I left about I six or ten messages with print pack and ship and got no response. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on, but they're, mm -hmm. they're having some trouble this way. So I'm waiting mm -hmm. to see because there was definitely a cost difference between the mm -hmm. two. And I want to make sure I am comparing apples to oranges and that mm -hmm. there wasn't an extra service that maybe wasn't on the invoice that they provided. They did the formatting and the layout. They did the design. Oh, okay. Work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we would not need that. Um, I'm asking the board if they would be willing to give me the autonomy to decide how to mail this newsletter in a way that would allow us to remain in the budget because we do not have much left for the year. Um, and then revisit the process of what the best shipping layout would be for the ongoing future. I don't know if anyone's willing to think about that. Um, when would this newsletter be? At this point, just the printing, if we go with print pack and ship, and like I said, I would like to talk to Michelle Kreft too to make sure that I'm comparing correctly, um, the cost for the printing would be $465, and that was rounding up to 2000 
And what month would it be? I would like to have a rough draft by the next meeting and then be ready to send and have the final draft approved for this for that September meeting and then mail five days after the meeting. Thank you. When you say round up to 2000, you're talking about mailing it to or getting Just it to 2000. 2000. Yeah. So that we have okay. some extra copies here at the, at the okay. town hall if somebody wanted to pick them up or what have you because I know a few times a few people last time around said they didn't get a copy that wanted it, so that would give us the stack on the table. And then there would also be the virtual copy as well. I am hoping to have them add a newsletter <coughs> section to the website. I'm just waiting for how and where they think would be the better place. I would like a tab along the top and just have it click and then just have kind of like the meetings where it's down by date. Um, so we'll see how they think it would work best. Um, we continue to utilize the website for notifications and Facebook to communicate. Rural work, speed monitoring, voter safety, and lake etiquette. This has been an effective way to make sure that residents who have made complaints about lake things that realize that it's not just sitting on someone's desk, we do really care. Um, we're continuing the fine tuning of the frequently asked questions. As those questions change with more communication, we're going to keep changing the website so that it's more up to date. Um, the YouTube testing has continued. I've asked Tate, with Kim's permission from Keiko, to adjust the distribution of the Wi-Fi channels to prioritize the administrative access over the guest access. Um, we were kind of under the impression that that was already done, but it wasn't. They were equally given, so we're hoping for more of like a 60-40 kind of split so that we have more priority and that the guest priority cannot take from ours. So that hopefully will get a little bit better feed there. Um, and I think that that's gonna give us a more true look at what YouTube can provide us with. Um, he also suggested the possibility of connecting the laptop through ethernet to test if it makes a difference having it hardwired in. The problem with that is the additional cost because we do not have an ethernet jack in this room. So we can't really test the equipment unless it's in the actual room. Can we get a cost for that by next month? Do you have a preference to which provider does that? What are our choices? Taylor. Taylor or Keiko? Yeah. Um, I would encourage us to have Taylor as they are going to be our primary IT okay. company going forward. Okay. Sounds good. That way they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, for Facebook, we had 13 new followers this month, 344 content interactions. We currently have 486 likes and 723 followers. I created a photo reel for the first time for the 4th of July parade photos. That has gotten a lot of traction. It reached 77 people at the time that this was written on the 5th, and I think it's doubled that since then. So um, that might be a way to get more engagement by using the different terminology and the things that they have. Um, I do have the quote written out by um, my pack and ship, and I will um, add that to my packet for next month once I've talked to Minuteman Press. Because again, I just don't want to compare two things that are not the same. Okay. All right. Okay. Any questions? I would Again. guess, yeah, the, I like the format, the way you did it. I would guess we probably can't use East Troy Times because there's a newspaper. The East Troy Times. Okay. And I just I don't know that we want to infringe on that. Or mm -hmm. I know it's I East know Troy. You said town of East Troy. Troy. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean LA. it isn't exactly. But. So many other yeah. descriptive yeah. words to use. Okay. Yeah. I'll brainstorm on that. And one thing we noted after the last one was um, we were missing like a date or an edition on there yeah, that we were, gonna, we were going to add. Yeah. I watched or, it on the footnote. On the bottom. Okay. Or we were going to put it, yeah. And then I think it's on the second page. I put the 2023 20, fall. Yeah. It's on the front. It's on the yeah, bottom of all the pages. Yeah. On the bottom. It's water right. right on the bottom, and then it's right. on the bottom. Second or third page. Okay. Bill, did you have a question, or was that the question? Uh, my question was for the virtual. Uh, so that would be part of the city or the township of website? Yeah, it would go on the website. So, I mean, we could easily virtually do it quarterly. That would be an easy do. 
especially now that it's formatted, it's just. Do you know of the, the, the shipping cost that is the. We have <coughs> 723 subscribers. Uh, followers on Facebook. Um, Facebook. That, does that translate into access to a virtual newsletter on the website? I mean, we could easily put the link on Facebook as well to take it from one to the other and try to drive the traffic back to the website too. Um, at this point, I just put it on the website for the last newsletter. Yeah, anything to get the word out mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. subscribers. Absolutely. Yeah. The only other thing I would suggest is like in the little box where you said want to go paperless, um, I would include email addresses if those are people who want like an electronic copy that way it's written as well they just email, give them a so choice well, to email they, you oh you want them to email me okay. yeah i can do that I, I i just think those kind of people probably wouldn't pick up the phone and call they'd be more likely to send an okay. email okay i didn't know or you can provide both to offer i guess my thought was i would offer them also then to subscribe to get the notifications because if they were people who were like okay i'll get the email but i'm not really going to go on the website it would give them the opportunity to get the subscription where it comes up on their phone and they wouldn't have to go to the website they just hit the link on their phone so i was kind of trying to mm -hmm. get more face time i guess than just the email but i didn't know yeah. yeah you could probably respond via email with that you know another yeah. option okay. is if you just subscribe to the page but I don't know. So, are you thinking we go completely virtual, like the village? Only for like this, like a um, summer one. Where I mean, is there a lot to say in the summer? Mm -hmm. Probably not. After we've been going with this, because normally the summer plans are already set mm -hmm. by the spring. You kind of knew what the Fourth of July parade was going to be. You knew what kind of the park had to offer. So, I think yeah. if we did that in the summer, and then in the winter or fall and spring we had a big one because again you can list all the compost site days for that you can list all of the um, recycled pickup because I know that's a question that people ask pretty frequently seems, seems mm -hmm. to be a lot more action happening in those two times of the year you know as far as and that's why we were looking at yeah spring fall right. and with the taxes yeah that's why we had three okay, okay. Mm -hmm. that works sure. that work? okay. yes just if I may ask because you wear three hats at the mm -hmm. planning commission court and, and webmaster so time management wise Time allocation, things I think we're good. Mm -hmm. okay. Especially now that it's formatted, it's just going to be getting everyone's submissions and getting it in. Thanks. Should be good. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Department of Public Works, Mr. Shield. June was kind of tough because I was off a week, Dave was off a week, Jeff was off a week. Everybody, everybody had stuff going on, but we got a, got a lot of stuff done. We had one kind of a little emergency with the tree in one of the storms on Ramak Park. We actually had to close the road down. It was a big branch that was hung probably 50, 60 feet up, probably two foot around, still alive, oak. And that was just way out of our capability, even with our bucket truck, to try and get that thing down. So with being kind of emergent, I got a hold of Arbor Images, who has done a lot of work for us. They came in the very next day, and in five hours, they had it on the ground. A little pricey, but in an emergent situation, that's what we had to do. Um, we opened the compost site. Everybody was very happy with that. Um, I looked into an option talking with Dave Buser and Alicia Zwicky from the Department of Natural Resources, <laughs> Solid Waste, and she, I believe, is the engineer for closed, or full, closed um, old dumps um, versus chipping all of our brush. We could probably still chip some of it, but with all the acres we have out there, he gave, Dave gave me a map of what the old dump actually looked like where our composting site is right now, wasn't even part of the old dump at all. Um, and on one end, it'd be, it'd be the north side, we could stack brush for 30 years, and all it's gonna do is keep breaking down, breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. And they have no problem with it at all. With us driving out there, 
Right. And then they're, they, they said, yeah, I have a letter. Joel read it this afternoon, and I had another contact with Alicia, the engineer, this afternoon. And she was just double checking, and she said, no, I'm at it. So it'll be a somewhat of a cost saving from the thousand dollars every time we had to go out there and chip it with all of us. Mm -hmm. Is nice. there any way to sell some of the wood that we have chipped? Because I know that I, I have chipped wood around <clears throat> as mulch around my property. I'm wondering if you know there wasn't some sort of market for selling some of that. I think you can open yourself up to some liability, especially okay. with all the different. Types of trees and, stuff and that get brought infection. In yeah. I wondered about that component, yeah. but yeah. I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, the other part for the board to recognize that 40 acre site, the old dump site, that it, its footprint was about 15 acres. So there's 25 acres out there that's just open land. So it's not as if we're squeezing anything in here. There's <laughs> room yes. everywhere. I don't know if have you, everybody been out there, Campo site? The, the old dump's pretty much dead center of which was the, the actual mm -hmm. landfill itself. Wasn't there discussion about putting a dog park out there on part of it? There was a request one? by uh, oh, yeah. Clay Montez about 10 years, well, five well, years ago. Well, no, years it's been longer than that. It was like when I first got on the oh. board in yeah, 2012. Been a long time, yeah. they, they tried out there and just with the contour of that. He, he had them. Big or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> Bor Borzoi. Yeah, I think he had. Yeah. 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 Cursing dogs. Yeah, he tried it for once and yeah. it wasn't. But there, there may have been, maybe what you're thinking of, there may have been a request even before, before uh, Clay asked, because Clay was like five, ten years ago. Yeah. Um, will part of the compost sites still have to be mowed, though? Because I know you have to mow it. Yep, yeah, and she reiterated that. It still has to be mowed once a year to keep any bigger, woodier brush from yep. growing down through that cap. Because mm -hmm. there's actually a clay, a two-foot clay cap, and then there's 18 inches of topsoil on top of that. And all the, as long as you stay off of that, it's hard to use as we need. So you have to stay off the clay. Is that Stay marked? off the cap. Cap. Yep. And how much... How is that, that marked? Yeah, how much area? Out of the 40 acres? Um, 15, roughly 15, 15 of it is. Okay. Yeah. Here's what it looks, mm -hmm. here's what it looks like. Like I said, I, with me being on vacation, I just got clarification on mm -hmm. all this today. Yeah, you're yeah. playing catch up. Yeah. It, was yeah. in the, it was in the middle. And you need a little bit of breathing room to <laughs> catch up. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, in the corner. Yeah. 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 Right in the corner. Yeah. 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 I passed it down here too. So I don't think I've seen it. The blue is the old dump news. footprint in yeah, the it'll, it'll be, 40 acres of square. I mean, half an hour now to go out there, push the brush out, mm -hmm. stack right. up the compost from the day, and if you're out there, an hour total yeah. so for one guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will you rework, because I know that before you went on vacation, you put together a budget. Yeah. Is that for the the compost site with having to Chip man it. that? Chip it. So, Chip it. are we going to create a hybrid uh, budget, or are you going back to the original budget? Probably, because now with not having to, if we were going to man it to make, if we were going to chip it, so right. we had to make sure the right size stuff was coming in, every single was laid, so that we could right, actually right, get right. at it pretty easy. This way, now they can. It'll. We'll still have. Somebody open it and stay there for an hour, an hour before. Okay. So we'll cut some cost there also. Okay. It won't be as expensive as what so yeah. we'll shipping it all. So we'll revise yeah. that original. Yeah. Or that secondary. Also be some nice habitat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Habitat. <For> critters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Just a question uh, to clarify. So the leave branches to naturally decay yep. and never chip. I mean, unless we get a big request, but usually in the fall and winter, when we do all our trimming, we have wood chips at hand, so if people want to. This last storm, did we have a lot of brush that needed to be taken to that area? Yes, there was, it was quite busy last time it was over. 
I, I saw you guys working in yep. your absence. So, <laughs> yes, um, they, they covered, to the they covered DP, very well. Thanks to the DPW crew for doing that because it seemed like we got a lot of straight money. Yeah, that kind of came right out of nowhere it from did. what everybody's told me. I was outside picking raspberries and it all of a sudden came up and I thought, yeah. where is this going? <laughs> Okay, anything else on your um, report? John Stoss brought it to my attention. We might have another road damage Don't buy you with parcel on Sternage Bridge Road. I contacted Vince today because I went in to see if any equipment was there, if I could get a name off of it. Um, it's as bad, if not worse, than Carver School Road. Or uh, Bell, Bell School, School Road. Is it by over? No, a new house, new. Uh, yeah, N8684 Sternage Bridge Road. And I, I got pictures of that. So when I, Vince was supposed to contact me to, or send me an email with the contractor's name or the builder's name so I can try and figure out who did the basement work. Because the basement walls are up, backfilled and all that. So I'm guessing it was either an excavator or a builder. But like I said, it's as bad as not. It was an excavator. Yeah. I remember seeing it. Okay. Yeah, you drive by that to get to work? I, they, came, they were coming out when I went by with my daughter, yeah. They weren't on the road yet, though. Okay, yeah, so it's just going to be some few phone calls to try and figure out who Ooh. was, uh, and hopefully not the same company. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a report on that one later, too, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then uh, that meeting with Chuck Decker and some people from Potter's Lake, because um, I don't know if everybody knows around Potter's Lake they have basically city sewer it was put in in 1981 I do believe and our main lift station is actually 27 feet in the ground and we can ride a little elevator down to do maintenance and stuff on there um, the walls are starting to flake the bottom starting to flake because it's all metal been in the ground for that long and it's time for a, a rehab and when we We'd abandon that, they'd put new pumps in and bring a lot of stuff above ground. But that's to the tune of six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. I got we got a quote from the same company two years ago, it was four hundred and fifty. <laughs> so it jumped that bad. So that's that's something that Potter's Lake is gonna have coming down the So the wet well in that pump station, is it metal or is it concrete? Concrete is the wet well. Okay. But the, all the, the stuff inside is. Yeah, because you got the wet wells next to it, and then you yep. got where all the mechanical bars and the right. metal sleeve, basically. Okay. And you're right, a little rickety <laughs> elevator down. Yeah. It's it's time before, because it's I'm sure it's below lake level, the bottom, mm -hmm. and if that springs a leak, yep, problem. It's not going to be good. So. Okay. That's something coming down the, the pipe for next year for Potter's Lake people. Okay. All right. Okay, any other questions for Todd? 650. 650. Good. One problem solved and a big one blow off. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's been talked about the last few years and now they finally actually, the engineers came out, went down, looked, a couple of Potters Lake management people came over, Chuck Decker, who's head of the sanitary district over there, all went down and were like, Okay, <laughs> it's time. Yeah. I mean, there's chunks coming off the size of softballs. It mother is mm -hmm. just bad. Yeah. Is that a confined space going down? Yes, it's confined space. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Is there, <laughs> being that there is a compromise in the structure, is that something we need to notify the fire district of in case? No, because we don't, we don't go down there anymore. You don't? No. Okay. Because um, a lot of the, the electric part, part we actually put in, they got a two, two and a half car garage over there, brought a lot of electrics up there. The only time we'd have to really do something is if a pump bed went bad. Okay. But it's confined space. We've all been confined space trained, so. Right. we got the, the meters. It's got fresh air that blows in. And okay. Yes. Okay, anything else? All right, thank you very much. Police uh, report, Chief Gorecki.
provided you guys a copy of our numbers for the month, the year to date, and then the month of June. I also included um, a copy of the monthly report from the boat patrol. And looking at that, for the month of June, submitted to the DNR, we have five citations and three warnings. Um, just out of my own morbid curiosity, I went back to 2021 because last year was not a normal year for the police department or the boat patrol, so I don't think it would be fair to compare. But comparing for the entire year of 2021, only 13 citations were written on Lake Beulah the entire summer. So far this year, we already have 11, and it's just past the 4th of July. So we are certainly ahead of the ball game with uh, strict enforcement on the lake as compared to in years past. So I wanted to point that out. Thanks for noting that. Um, for the month of June, a little, uh, little slower than I anticipated. A uh, total of 695 calls for service, uh, which is almost the third slowest month of the year uh, compared to February and then followed by January. So calls for service were uh, significantly down compared to May at 800 uh, calls for service. Um, so that's a, a significant change that just wanted to point out to you. And then the, the last item I had, um, I had emailed the information at the last home board meeting I spoke, spoke about a code enforcement officer um, or looking at a code enforcement company. Um, the company that I spoke with uh, is Markley Municipal Services. Um, as I explained in the board meeting <coughs> in June, um, they work with a lot of the local municipalities. Um, after Shannon Markley, who is the one I was in contact with, mm -hmm. sent me the information that I forwarded to you guys as far as what that stuff looks like as far as agreements between the municipalities. I believe she sent two of them uh, to us. Um, I spoke with her and uh, Shannon uh, has asked her husband, Dave Markley, who works with uh, Markley Municipal Services to be here as, as I did. If you have any questions specific to what they do. And the um, question was posed to me, you know, what do we need this for? And I kind of, the analogy that I used was um, if I'm a builder and I want to get a little bit ahead of the game, I find somebody like Vince, our building inspector, mm -hmm. and I put him on my staff as retainer and I have them look at things when I'm starting to do it and bounce it off and maybe anticipate some of the things for the future. Um, if I'm gonna be putting up a project with Vince's expertise, if I was a builder and hired him, I can show him the project, show him the layout, and he's gonna be able to point out maybe some deficiencies I have or places I need to shore things up or making some changes. And that is kind of what I'm looking at with the code enforcement. To my knowledge, none of the six of us that are currently full-time at the police department have any code enforcement background. Um, if you tell me or ask me the difference between a C2 property and a C4 property, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, if I need to find a property line, I use the Walworth County um, zoning map. And as we have found out in the past, those maps aren't that accurate. There were errors on them. We're, the information is put in by humans. We make mistakes, so if I refer to that and that information is bad, then I give bad information. Um, because that's not my forte, that's not what I do, it is what a company like uh, Markley Municipal Services does. And they do it for a lot of our local municipalities um, in the county. Okay, a couple comments on that. Uh, number one, uh, it's not budgeted for us, so this would be something the board would have to talk about for, for 2024. But explain for me, and you had mentioned code, code enforcement versus ordinance enforcement, because you you have to enforce the ordinances. So right. how do you differentiate that, because you mentioned code? What, what Building you, code? Zoning the, code? 
the, the some of the some of the things that I've been asked to, to look into um, to give you an example. And I don't mean to pick on anybody on the board or Mr. Mills if I offend, I'm not trying to. If I read some of our uh, property abatement, junk vehicle, junk on our property, the ordinances are really vague and it's a mindset. So me as a law enforcement officer, what I don't wanna have is a law that I can read two ways. And I think Mr. Mills, probably being on in the attorney side of things, understands what I'm talking about. I can read it one way and I can apply it or I can look at it a slightly different way and apply it a different way. And a lot of times that comes up um, with code enforcement type of things, uh, building code type of things. Um, and it's very prevalent in union contracts. As an example, a union contract can say something and be interpreted completely different way because you meant it one way when you were writing it. We interpreted it a different way as we're reading it as the employee. However, we both agreed to it, but two years down the road, we're bickering and arguing because we see it from opposite ways and it actually says it and could be applied both ways. And that's the type of stuff that really like to work out in our ordinances and code enforcement type of area um, because we don't get that expertise. We don't see it all the time. I don't run into a ton of code enforcement stuff. I haven't said September. I think I've had one complaint. So it's not a high priority and I absolutely agree with uh, the chairman. I'm not looking for this to happen during this budget cycle. I'm looking to the future and the, ne the next budget cycle uh, for that. So I'm glad uh, the chairman actually brought that up because trying to do it now, we're already in a budget cycle and, and I don't see where the funds would come from for that. But it's something to be brought up now. We have time to chew on it before we reach our September, October uh, time frame when we start sitting down and talking about budgets and can get all the questions asked, get it all aired out and have a good vetting and, and make a very informed decision if that's something yeah. we wanna do. And we know it's gonna be about 50 bucks an hour in that area about. about uh, but one thing, the contract we were looking at from the city of Delavan, it had landlord licensing, vacant building registration, program inspection, and code enforcement. Now, I don't think we would necessarily have a need for the landlord licensing or even vacant building registration because the way ordinance we have, but we have peer permits. That could be a, in there Correct. instead of those. Peer permits and code enforcement maybe is what we'd be looking at. You know, but, no. you know, we're under county zoning. And For I'm not sure if mm -hmm. Delavan has its own zoning code. They have their own zoning. That would make a huge difference. I, I can't answer that, Mr. Mills. I don't even know if Mr. Markley can answer that. Delavan, the city of Delavan has their own zoning code. That's okay. Okay. So we wouldn't have that here. Okay. Well, correct. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Instead of uh, those first three items listed, like with Delavan, it would be code enforcement and maybe peers. Yeah, no, no. And Jim is saying zoning oh, in general. Well, zoning in general, we're in the county, county. zoning. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So so the county zone. has to deal with that. You know. Can I ask if you've um, consulted or advised a previous police chiefs when there have been questions? About I have, but I can count on probably one hand in the last five years when this is we've even had a complaint like this. Yeah. And I know prior to that. What generally would happen is the former chiefs would issue a citation, and then I know with Chief Sergis give months and months worth of time to try to allow them to bring the property into compliance. So very seldom even got before the municipal judge here. Okay, so so maybe the proper term instead of saying code enforcement would be ordinance enforcement. Because we have our ordinances, which are our towns and our courtroom. Yeah, and I don't know when I'm looking on the <coughs> web page, it talks about ordinances and it talks about codes. So okay, I see right. what you're saying. 
And Vince would be tomato, the tomato, tomato, I guess, at this yes. point. Right. Vince would be the main coach. Leads are covered by you and Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, right. So I don't know if there's much left over yeah. that would make it worthwhile, but I would like uh, a list of the ordinances um, that you want to be more specific in nature. Yes. And then we can maybe, yeah. I can get authorization maybe yeah. later in the year to... Re, uh, revisit things. Oh, okay. okay. That's what I was going to ask about too. Is if there's something in particular that you guys are running into, you know, certain yep. ones, that'd be great yeah. to right. try to define it more for you. Right. So then you're like, I, I, can, I, can, I can tell you, you know. one now. The loud music ordinance. Feel free to pull it up and read it. Yep. Okay. There's zero time frame in it, and based on my reading of it, um, Michelle decides to run her chainsaw at two in the afternoon. Todd doesn't like it. Uh, Todd can call and say. Michelle's running her chainsaw and it's annoying me. And based on our ordinance, I should go over and write Michelle a ticket for cutting her trees down at two in the afternoon. I think there's a reference to decibel level, which I know would never happen. Well, you right. Mean. So I don't know how anyone ever gets cited under Who's that. Who's gonna measure it, be able to measure it. Yeah. It, it was, it's, it's super big and that's mm -hmm. the one that comes to mind is right. the, the loud noise that in the two in the afternoon you're running your chainsaw and your neighbor calls, I, should be writing you a ticket. That right, doesn't right. feel right to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. how does this help the everyday citizen? I don't want I, mean, to, I don't want to open Pandora's box, uh, Supervisor Church, but what it what it would do is I think give an extra set of eyes. And right now we are complaint based for um, different types of, of ordinance violations. Um, and a lot of the municipalities start out as that, um, using Sharon and Darian as an example. Um, and once they uh, employed uh, the code enforcement and saw how they worked in their professionalism, it is now they go out and will take notice of something that's starting and so kind of nip it in the butt before it gets going. Um, to, to, to have the abatement process start early. Um, you know, Chad decides he's gonna park three snowmobiles in his front yard and it appears that they're starting to rust out. Uh, the code enforcement may knock on Chad's front door and say, uh, snowmobiles in the front yard, and under this ordinance, you can't be doing that. You're gonna have to come up with a plan. And so earlier intervention and prevention is where I would see it actually going, um, type of thing, so that it doesn't get uh, out of control. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a heads up, a forethought uh, with the new um, proposed development on the former Double D site. Uh, the gentleman presented to the Land uh, Planning Commission plans for a, a band shell and music. Um, so those people on Mill Pond or in the streets around there um, aren't aware of that because that proposal came in after our notes were given to us. So that you you have a, you have the possibility of a issue, you know, there. issue mm -hmm. that could be testy. Okay. I have a question. Are you the aforementioned Mr. Martin? Yes, sir. May I ask him a Please. question? So yes. you're, you're in the place yes. of contractors. So how does it work with you as a code enforcer in incorporated communities? Specifically working with directly with the building inspector or the police department? Yeah, so we also all the above. So I'm thanks for having me. So like Chief Grecky said, my wife is the chief of this operation, but she's she had some landlord licensing inspections, you know, late night. But so the way we so we do work well with the police department, as you indicated. My what if there was something to do with with a building inspection or something that would be inspected, if you if you wanted that service, she would could work with the building inspector as she does with the city of Dalvin because they have their own building inspector, and every other municipal town that we have has their own building inspector. So we're not we don't offer building inspections as far as far as like new construction and stuff like that, but my wife does do inspections regarding landlord licensing or or you mentioned the um, the vacant building um, um, 
what are they? Registration? Vacant, vacant, yeah, vacant, thank you. That vacant building registration, which all that essentially says is that a building that's vacant for so long they have to register with the community, and then it usually results in a fee on that person, and then that requires <coughs> them to have an inspection yearly. Otherwise, otherwise what we've noticed, like Gary Ann just created this, Otherwise, you're going to have a building like what we had in Darien, where it just gets so delighted that we have to tear it down. And we obviously, we don't want that to happen. So it started with the city of Delavan, and then that's how that works. But the way we work with the police department, if, um, if we have a, uh, an ordinance violation of, of something, let's say, of unsightly debris or, or of a building that that patrol goes out on, and then they, like a rescue call or something like that, and they get inside of a house, that is so hoarded that it's unsafe for someone to live in, then we have the authority to condemn that. We usually work with the city or the town attorney um, in how to condemn that property to make it habitable for somebody to live in. And then um, if it, you know, um, Attorney Mills mentioned the previous chief or whoever it was that, that would write citations for, for code enforcement violations or ordinance violations and give them so much time. We actually, we actually don't write a lot of citations at all. We usually mail a letter first or two letters or sometimes three letters and try to get them to comply with it. And as long as they're like complying a little bit, then we don't get to a point where we have to issue a citation. And then if it gets to a point where that, then we do work with the police department and other community, and all the communities that we have, we actually have our own um, tracks login that um, as civilians we write municipal code um, tickets but that's essentially up to the police department I mean it started one way where the patrol officers would do it as um, Lieutenant Rungi used to work for the town of Delavan we, we did the town of Delavan too and that's how I think it started and then essentially we started writing the citations on our own because Lieutenant Rungi doesn't want to write the citations <laughs> so we do so, okay. um, how long have you been doing this? Well, my wife has been doing it since uh, 2002, and she was a certified building inspector at that time in the city of Delvin, or as, and the assistant to the building inspector. And then we became a contractual municipal code enforcement um, in uh, 2014. So uh, we currently have, um, we have besides me and my wife, I'm actually a police lieutenant in the city of Delvin, so that's not my, my full-time gig, but between me and my wife, we have two other um, employees that we have that will do some of our work at, for us in Delavan and Darien. And we also work with my son, who is 26 years old, and his fiance, and um, who have their, also their own code enforcement company. So collectively, we have 12 communities that we um, do code enforcement for. Okay. Do any of your clients um, encompass lake properties? Some few issues that we've been talking about, Peter's meeting as I wouldn't say I wouldn't say peers. I don't recall having a prop uh, dealings with peers. But when so when we do town of Delavan, just like just like I noticed with the the town of East Troy here, you have a you have a residential area just as the town of Delavan does around the lake that we want. That obviously is a, is a great place for people to come, people to visit. So we want to make sure that the properties there are are in good condition, so that someone who has a really nice house that put a lot of work into their house, they want their property's value goes up, and we want to make sure the person next door who's parking eight, not just eight boats, but eight abandoned boats that have weeds growing through them, that we can get those off the property too. So as um, far as uh, town of Delavan goes, and, and I know my son, he has like Lynn Township and um, town of Geneva, areas like that. We also, we also have done, um, I don't know if you, have, if you do short-term rentals here, but we do We've done so. short-term rental inspections, like they have to register with, um, I believe, I don't know if they register with the town and with the county, mm -hmm. but, but then that requires an inspection on the, on the short-term rentals too. But as mm -hmm. far as lake communities, yeah, we, we definitely have experience with lakes. Okay. So question? you're saying that this would be like the police would forward you a report or you know just like an address or a uh, concern and then your team would go out and look at it or your team is automat is already it, it, it's actually, it, themselves, it's actually how the town would, would like us to do it if the town mm -hmm. wants a complaint complaint based like the chief said it's going to come it's either going to come to him first or it's probably going to come to the window and then the window um, or the town clerk or whoever whoever's in charge in the window, they usually will just forward us 
an email. Okay. Um, and if you'd rather go through with the chief first, that's fine too. And it's entirely up to how the town wants to do it. And if you want to be more proactive, where we're, we're driving around looking for, for stuff, we do that too. And that, that seems, because a lot of these towns start complaint based, but then they, I think they find it easier for us to drive around and find stuff too, because the neighbor doesn't always want to complain to the neighbor. Or when the neighbor complains to, to the trustees of, of this property, they, I mean, I don't know any of you guys want to go up there and knock on the door and be like, yeah, you got to mow your grass or whatever, it, whatever the complaint is, you know? So, so we'll do that for you. <laughs> All right, any other questions, Chad? Yeah, no. Good. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. And uh, we'll be, uh, right budget time, we'll be kicking this around some. Right. Thank you very much. You all done? Or anything else? I am all done, unless somebody has something for me. Uh, I had no other questions. Anybody for the chief? Um, Officer Crowell. Yes. Commendation from the fire district. Yes. Uh, on our Facebook page, uh, Officer Kroll uh, responded, assisting the sheriff's office out at uh, Alpine Valley Resort. Uh, found a man in cardiac distress, uh, pulse is non breather, uh, immediately started CPR, uh, affixed his AED, and uh, in Chief DeGaro's uh, assessment, uh, arriving second on scene, uh, had Officer Kroll not acted in the uh, manner that he did. Uh, with timely, uh, unwavering action, uh, the man may not have survived uh, the choking slash cardiac arrest event. Please compliment him, the boss. I embarrassed him in front of the entire de police department when I uh, gave him his commendation, I think. Uh, he turned pretty red, didn't he, Scott? Yeah, I, I, might, I made sure it was done very publicly. So. I'm honored that he took the initiative to do that. Yes. Okay. Anything else? We good? Thanks. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. Uh, East Troy Area Emergency Services District report. Anything, Barb? Yeah. Um, in paragraph two on my report, I need to make it known that the town of Spring Prairie on June twentieth. Uh, called this special meeting and asked that the East Troy Area Emergency Services District attend. We did so with our attorney. Um, they voted three to two to pull out of the fire district. It seems their complaint is that the uh, East Troy area not defining village or town is growing and they needed different equipment than Spring Prairie did and they did not feel that they wanted to participate in paying for additional equipment, um, more specifically the ladder truck and they voted three to two to pull out of the district. Or two to one. Two to one. Two to one. Two to one. Sorry, mm -hmm. bad. Um, a week later, they called us back and asked us to attend a meeting. And in that meeting, the residents um, were highly um, motivated to um, have the Spring Prairie Board see a different perspective, at which time the Spring Prairie Board voted 3-0 to return to the district and not withdraw for at least the 2024 year. Um, there are more discussions to follow. Spring Prairie has created a new emergency services committee, I think, to start looking at what they do. Um, Lyons would have been the fire district to respond to the northern section of Spring Prairie. So they are back in the district and we will now continue our budget process uh, beginning in July. We're slightly off. We had planned on starting two weeks earlier and everything sort of hit a brick wall and we needed to stop what we're doing and see where we were at. So. For right now, the fire district is at three. 
um, members, the town, the village, and the town of Spring Prairie. Plus contracting with two other. We contract with the town of Lafayette. We also contract uh, the town of Lafayette. We service fire and EMS. Um, the town of Troy has its own fire department, so we service the town of Troy with EMS. Um, I listed all of our upcoming events um, and the open house for the fire district is scheduled for um, we have the August 12th. August 12th. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. No questions? All right. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Uh, Park Committee reports, Supervisor Reyes. I do not have anything this month between my travel and Todd's vacation. We weren't able to get together to walk through some of the equipment issues, so we'll be <coughs> setting that up shortly. Okay. Uh, Booth Lake Memorial Park report, Supervisor Wales. Yeah, we, uh, we just had our first music in the park. We're doing the last Fridays of the month, uh, doing live music down at the lower pavilion and doing uh, the burgers and brats and hot dogs and stuff, and then our normal concession. Uh, it went pretty good. I guesstimated about 80 people were probably down there. Um, it was beautiful, great weather, beautiful sunset. It was, it was a nice time. I highly recommend people coming out. We're doing it all the way through September. I think it's September, the last Friday of September. But yeah, we have some great music. Uh, music in July is going to be great. Uh, we also decided on doing some inflatable play equipment for out in the water. We have an, uh, uh, our seawall was redone by Jason Burke, and in, he had done that at no charge and asked us as the park to, as we could, that that amount of money that it would have cost us to put things in more things in for the kids so we, uh, we put in a slide we've done ice rinks um, up above to try to get some more use out of the park in the winter months um, and now we just are in the works of some inflatable equipment the larger stuff but we the park supervisor her and our husband which are fan, have been fantastic really like looked into the safety end of it um, and life jackets and such um, all as a part uh, for the safety of anybody under the age 12 and whatnot. But some really great things that are happening out there, and I think that pretty much covers it in a nutshell. All right. Any questions? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Lake Beulah Management District report. Greg, anything? Uh, the Management District met on Tuesday, June 13th at 5 30, and we're scheduled to meet again. Tuesday, July 18th, next Tuesday. Uh, Chairman Bitter began the meeting by submitting his letter of resignation, effective in September of 2023, and uh, a nominating committee will be formed to seek his replacement. You know, it's, it's a month old, but uh, all, all the buoys are installed on the lake, and uh, aquatic plant harvesting has begun. Uh, the lake monitoring equipment has been installed and are gathering information. Uh, representatives of the management district met with the officials of the village of East Troy to uh, discuss logistics on the test well, well number seven. Uh, there was a proposal to uh, dredge the gutter Dresden property on, uh, in uh, one of the sensitive areas of the lake. Uh, that uh, approval has been revised to just expand the existing channel that's along the shoreline. Uh, none of the shoreline will be uh, modified in the dredging. So I think the, uh, the approval of the dredging is going to go ahead just to enlarge the channel. The Lake Beulah Protection and Improvement Association received a thousand dollar donation from the management district to be applied to their <coughs> stocking program. Typically, uh, June 12th is the final deadline for stocking, stocking fish into the lake. Uh, and we had asked 
the Protection Improvement Association for some proof that the stocking is actually uh, having some effect on the fish population in the lake. And there was a presentation of, uh, by a DNR uh, fisheries biologist uh, to explain how uh, research is performed, where the stocking releases have occurred, and how often and what species. The DNR uh, releases walleye fingerings, fingerlings in the lake. And uh, the DNR has been stocking the lake since 2014 uh, in, uh, in the even years. Typically, uh, they release 10 fingerlings per acre. And uh, Lake Beulah is 850 acres. So doing the math, it's about 9,000 fingerlings. The DNR considers Lake Beulah a sentinel lake and it receives the highest priority in the programs. Uh, lake, uh, the lake is scheduled for a comprehensive analysis of the fish population, <clears throat> which includes spawning beds and species in the lake in, uh, starting in 2025 and will uh, carry over until 2027. Uh, the uh, Lake Beulah Protection and Improvement Association had planned to improve the walleye spawning beds uh, at Stringer's Bridge uh, by uh, dumping rock on the ice. Uh, in the past couple of winters, the ice hasn't supported uh, the weight of a truck, so that has been uh, put on hold for a while. Uh, the uh, management district uh, scheduled their annual meeting to occur on August 29th, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Next scheduled meeting is July 18th, 2023, 5.30 p.m. here. Any questions? Uh, there is going to be another public hearing on the Dresden Guthart dredging tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, I don't know really why they're doing it again because they already had a public hearing on this, but I believe that since I think you mentioned they revised the plans, they downscaled it some. But I will be calling into that public hearing also. They had a 20 day uh, span from the last Zoom meeting to respond, so this is probably their response. Oh, well, it could be. Okay. All right, any questions? All right, thank you very much. All right, recycling committee report. John, anything? Uh, nothing tonight on okay. recycling. Okay, library report. Uh, yes, library <clears throat> report. The East Troy Lions Public Library Board of Trustees would like to thank the East Troy Town Chairman and members of the town board that attended the Tri Troy informational meeting on June 20th. This meeting was with Walworth County Administrator Mark Liberta. And uh, Topic of that meeting was removing statutory obstacles to the formation of a joint tri troy library. And second, the next scheduled library board meeting is tomorrow, Tuesday, July 11th at 2 p.m. That's all I have. Go ahead. Okay. Questions? All right. Thank you, John, for both parts. Planning Commission report, Supervisor Worker. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, pretty straightforward tonight. Two items from the four items that we saw or listened to on uh, Wednesday, June, July 5th meeting. Um, in the first, the Planning Commission requests a motion of the Town Board of East Troy to approve a land separation CMS request as stated at West 2251 St. Peter's Road in East Troy, Wisconsin, parcel number PA 169600002. Uh, real straightforward uh, property um, large enough to sustain a five acre car, car route uh, as a, an R1 parcel. Uh, it's the um, Lambert's property and they are essentially 
preparing a parcel for the daughter to build a home. Okay. All right. So, so I make a motion that the board um, <clears throat> uh, uh, approve this land separation CMS request. I'll second. All right, Chad. Second. Discussion. Questions. Hearing none on the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. None. Motion carries. A second item: uh, the planning commission requests a motion by the town of East Shore Ward to approve a conditional use request as stated at North 9402 Stone School Road, Gonneville, Wisconsin, zip code 53149, parcel number PA3068004. Um, this is for a, um, a ho hobby farm designation. Um, uh, really very straightforward in terms of the county ordinance, chapter 74-4 and section 74 Dash 61 agriculture related uses for hobby farm. Um, in essence, we have a property that uh, is eligible for the hobby farm status with this zoning designation, um, having the qualified number of animals, uh, qualified manure disposal, a um, removal, and lastly, the topography, topography is such on this property that the location of the barn uh, is problematic with the setbacks, except for a hobby farm, which has setbacks that allow for the location of the barn as proposed. So I'd like to make a motion that the town board approve this conditional use request. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. Discussion? Yeah, question? I guess I'm just curious. I'm familiar with the property I drove by. And it's my understanding, they're kind of like right on the side yard. Are they talking about 35 feet set back from the road? Because it no, seems so like it's the, a big drop there. There is a, a railroad. And, uh, yeah. So it's, it's back there. And yeah. it's, the topography is such that with their builder for this hobby farm, uh, once they got, once they ad ad adhered to the 100 foot setbacks, they were faced with significant topography um, limitations, bringing in fill, grading. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can see it from the road. Right. Yeah. Uh, and also, both, I should have mentioned that both neighbors have road letters of support, both the Roberts and the Griffins. Okay. So it's just um, with the assistance of the county zoning administrator. Um, and suggesting the um, hobby farm designation, they can locate the barn and then safely place their primary residence and well and uh, prevent runoff problems with the manure. Okay. All right, any other question or discussion? Okay, and the motion to approve that uh, conditional use. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None, most carries. All right, uh, that's the only two items you had. Thank you very much. All right, public comments period number one. Um, anybody? John? It's uh, online. If online. You want, it's online. If you want me to forward the link or the yeah, letter, I'll send that, that to you. Okay. And then um, in our uh, township here, does anybody know on county roads uh, how much of those county roads percentage wise are 35 miles an hour or less? I do. What would that number be? Coventry Highway L, three and a half miles are 55 miles per hour, half a mile is 35. That's at Beulah Station. County ES, 3.3 miles is at 45 miles per hour, and 6 tenths at 35, that's by Elegant Farmer and the fire station. And J is 1.9 miles at 35 miles per hour, 1.2 miles at 45, and 1.2 miles at 55. So there's 1.2, there's 4.7 miles of those county trunks that are 55. Okay, so has the town board uh, thought about 
how they're going to enforce because right now as of Jan Jan July 1st mm -hmm. any county road in our township is eligible to have ATV UTV use on it and I got that from Richard Huff at the mm -hmm. county so basically we have a quagmire for enforcement because certain parts of the road you can ride on legally and certain parts of the road you can't that's that's why we have uh, 9c where we're going to authorize attorney mills to look at that because there is conflict between state statute and county ordinance and that that's got to be figured out okay yes. um has there been any progress on the uh 1485 feet on st peter's road that the village has jurisdiction over uh you'd have to go to that meeting okay yeah and then uh another question i have is i noticed down on uh, 10b it says uh authorized attorney to amend the ordinance regarding limit on public comments and placement on the agenda the same um are we going to be doing away with our two public comments uh that's what's going to be discussed uh it's not my item on here uh but it appears that that would be probably the case that's going to be the discussion so would it be uh, make a lot of sense to uh put the public comments in a certain spot on the agenda that you can't have a comment after the board takes action or does talks about something it seems to be more convoluted like i'm not knocking Before. on the village but the village of east does the public comments in the beginning which doesn't give anybody any time to have listen to what the board has to say on it mm -hmm. so it seems like we have it right and they might not have it right over there i'm not knocking them but i'm just saying okay. i'd like to be able to hear what the board has to say before i make my public comments okay that's what's going to be discussed when we get to that item okay, yes thank you Right. Thank you, John. Public comments, anyone? Ken? Uh, Ken Zest, Belfour Road. I'm representing the residents on Belfour Road for, to, on the agenda to, I guess, to get Belfour Road designated rustic road. Uh, the ultimate purpose is to lower the speed limit from Highway 20 to Hilbert Mill. If we can achieve that without the designation, I'm all for it, as the residents would veto. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about financial reporting. Um, our town's done a great job of um, improving on the packet and the information is since since August 22, 2022. Um, and I thank you for that. That's wonderful. Um, in the packet, um, the clerk and the treasurer has provided a written report of activities throughout the month. Again, that's very helpful and I appreciate that as well. In um, February and March of this year, the packet, the treasurer also included information about settlements and disbursements. And again, I thought that was a great start to providing town financial information. Uh, for the rest of the year, there's only been verbal reporting of settlements, transfers, very common of what happened tonight. Um, I, I think it's really difficult to follow. I don't have any numbers or anything in front of me. And I'd like to understand why that's not provided today in the packet. Um, so going forward, I'm asking the board to consider um, providing enhanced financial reporting to the town residents um, by providing a schedule of revenue, expenditures, and changes in the general fund for the current year's budget, the year-to-date actuals, and the variance. Um, reporting on a monthly basis would ultimately be the best, but I understand there are times of the year where it might be tough, but I at least like a quarterly report. Um, the landfill fund would be helpful, but it's not as important as the general. Um, I've seen the town's budget worksheet, which provides prior year, current year detail for budget, actuals, and variance. And since the town's financial system already has the standard report, I don't think there would be, it, it wouldn't be difficult to run this report year to date each month and share it with the residents. Uh, there, there may be other reports that the financial system uses. I, I don't know what financial system they use, but maybe there's one for just the current year, and maybe there's a consolidated version. Um, I know the budget worksheet is 
16 pages long. It's big. Um, so I'm just asking for your consideration to provide that information going forward. Okay. If you need samples, I'm happy to provide them. Right. And we, we have discussed this as a board before, and we will certainly discuss it again. Okay. I've been requested so a couple times. All right. Thank you. Well, close. four seconds extra. <laughs> or short. All right. Anybody else? Come, public comments? Anyone? Okay. Move forward here. Uh, unfinished business uh, update on East Troy Railroad Museum Bridge on Beach Road. Uh, as we discussed at our last month's meeting, um, we sent the purchase agreement basically to the railroad and they sent back uh, a, a letter or a correspondence that said they wanted to wait until they seen if the earmarks um, that they requested through Senator Baldwin's office came through and they did not. So I, I called up Ryan Jonas and said, okay, here we are. Uh, no sense waiting anymore because we know the earmark, you know, the long shot that it was did not occur. And we can't wait any longer because we had uh, at least three funding opportunities here that will fund anywhere between 80 and 100 mm -hmm. percent uh, of the project. But the only way it happens, as we know, is we have to own the bridge. Uh, so I will be meeting with uh, the CEO, Ryan Jonas and President Ward on 717. Uh, he requested that we sit down on his patio and work out the final details on this. They agree in principle. They agree that this is how it's got to be done. And, and I don't know what they're going to uh, bring up for questions, but um, I should have then for our August meeting pull the trigger on that, maybe even sooner. They may sign the contract and get it to us. We'll see. Their attorneys said uh, without numbers, he can't recommend that they. Agree. That's what he said originally. The attorney's not invited to this meeting. So that may tell you something there. Okay. Uh, hopefully. Um, but the numbers are pretty obvious. Uh, we already discussed all the numbers. The question is, is will it be a rehab? Will it be a replacement? And there's options on all of those. Um, so. Uh, I'll, hopefully I'll have an answer by the 17th mm -hmm. and if necessary we'll maybe call a special meeting to just finalize that if they have some changes they're going to request. We'll see. But we, when we approve that contract we pretty much said here it is, you're on the hook until it's replaced, you know, and I think they realized that, they said they agree. I'm gone from the 21st of February. Okay. 30th I'll be back. All right, so that's where we're at on that. Yeah. All right, uh, consideration of installing speed bumps on Fairway Road. Kind of a preface to this, remember, a couple of years ago we put uh, speed bumps on uh, East Shore Road, and then within a couple of weeks we had some complaints, not some complaints, one complaint that said, it's unsafe, that's called throwing the safety card. And uh, as you know, in any governmental situation, if a municipality is put on notice of a potential safety issue and does nothing, and then an accident does occur, the town would be considered potentially liable uh, because of negligence. Uh, what's different about this request is, first of all, it's a small section of road that really the only people that really should be on there are the people that live there and 99 or 95 percent of the people that live in that road signed this and if we ever went back to East Shore we'd probably request the same thing that we get signatures of everybody that wants to to, uh, to sign off on it. Uh, so that's what's different here and uh, Chad you brought up a great point last month and say yeah you've got to open the the door here, if you go ahead and approve this, then we can kind of expect here potentially in the next every month another request for another road to do it. Um, the speed bumps, I think, work relatively well. Booth Lake, and uh, I believe Troy puts those in, right? Yeah. Right. 
and they're, they're a little bit softer, so they're a little less effective, but they still have complaints where people will slow down for the bump and then race up to the next bump, slow down and go over it, whatever, so they're not 100% effective. So this question came up, and I, I told the applicant, I said, well, you know, you petition the board, which they did. We got the petition last, last month, and it's everybody except there was one person on there that's not against it but said, I don't sign anything, you know. Uh, so the people that live there want it, but I rode that road plenty of times, and I, you guys can all speak up as what you think of it. It's 25 miles per hour now, so the issue probably is not the speeders for the people that live there. It's probably for, they mentioned, UPS or delivery trucks or something. Sure. Okay. And I don't know, you know uh, those people, uh, all you need is take down that license number and report it to, you know, FedEx or, or Amazon or whatever, and that driver's going to have a problem because they don't need that bad press. Um, so is it a problem? Is it not? I guess I'm interested to see what the board all thinks of this. Chad, why don't you start? We'll go across here. What do you think? I. Well, I, the gentleman who came last month said, well, because of, you know, I, I'm not, I don't think speed bumps are always the answer. I think there's a lot of steps that maybe they could go forward to, like, you know, where there was discussion, I think, turning those said, in the road over by you or in your community, every yard put a sign up, like, make it a point, you know, and if everybody's signing the piece of paper, well, let's, let's get the ball rolling with some signage. They can put their own signage in their yard, which is, you know, fine. I really... I think there's some some areas like the Booth Lake. I'm on the board over there, and they're actually want another one. And I've been witness when we did the Centennial last year. There's straight trucks that I don't even think should be on that road. They came flying by there when we were trying to get ready, and I'm like, wow, like, and they're like, this is all the time. Well, there's there could be 150 kids, little kids there. I mean, I know we have the fence and there's a stop signs, but I think the potential of the pot. You know, and I'm not saying. If you have just one child, or I'm not, you know, separating, but there's a potential right there with that hill that it's, it's, people are getting pretty reckless. But I think that maybe you're right with a, a discussion on license plates from UPS or Amazon or FedEx, because that was one of the big culprits. You did one mention else signing. And, and I'm sure there's a couple on the road that, you know, the kids or, you know, when the parents aren't with them or they're just driving or, you know. But to start calling that in, I think, would be a good way to do it because there's a lot of small roads, including the one I live on. You can barely get two cars wide. And people go fat. I mean, they, I, I would, I'd would love speed bumps and spike strips and all sorts of stuff, but, you know. <laughs> Not the spikes. You got, I mean, I, I, and I get it. I stop people and ask them, you know, slow down. And, I, you know, I mean, we're in a, there's kids, there's dogs, and I, I, I get it. But I just think that it's really going to start opening up a can of worms in our community. and. Our DPW is, is running like mad as usual, you know, summertime, cutting grass, doing this, you know, getting ready for winter, and, and not that I don't think they could handle it, but we're just going to start putting more workloads on, putting in speed bumps certain times of the years, get them out, get them out. Why aren't they out yet? I, I can just envision some of this stuff happening, but okay. I'm only one vote. So. Okay. Michelle? I guess um, I'm wonder do we need to do a speed study on the road first i know we did some of that activity in some other areas um i think when we put the the automated speed signs mm -hmm. out there it definitely slows people down i saw the report for stone school road i think definitely um i know people speed on their road but when the sign is there people slow down maybe you know we should take a look at some of the data um, to see if it is just the delivery trucks or something like that, if we can look at um, some other actions before we jump right to speed bumps. And I'm a little disappointed that they're not here tonight to follow up. Anybody the here from Fairway? from Fairway? I don't think so. Okay. Mark? Um, I've driven the road twice. Um, I, I have been on the road with my bike and that's not a safe thing for me to do but um, I really worry about the speed bumps and there are lots of kids in the neighborhood and I'm just wondering if they were to hit the speed bump with their bike if that wouldn't cause more of a problem than 
putting up the sign. I really like the automated sign. I know that it makes a difference when yeah. I'm driving and I see the, the speed limit splash. Um, but I, I've seen where cars on my street are slowing down because of that. And so I wonder if that isn't a good thing. I also love the idea of writing down the time or the, the license the plate culprit, the of culprit. the vehicle. Because I think that that provides some really interesting data that could be more specific. Bill? Scott, if you were going to put speed bumps, would you put one at each end? One by Horseshoe and one by uh, East Shore? Yeah, I think we can hit on the way to But would there be two? Probably three. <laughs> it's genuine where, you got split, where you got the split by grassy on that corner. Um, one thing I'd say about speed bumps is I hate them in terms of being the motorist driving over them. And everybody on this road, um, they're going to have the pleasure of driving over two or three speed bumps every time they go to work, go to the gas station, go to the grocery store. In a way, they're the ones that are going to be punished more than anybody because at they're, least they're twice the users, they're yeah. going to be challenged each time they enter and return to their homes. Uh, but it, it, I was there, I've been on the road about 15 times, uh, on my car, on my bike, um, once driving with my wife, and she said, what are you, what's your speed right now? This is perfect. I was going 23. She said, this is, this is perfect. You can, you can see as a driver, you can react. Well, the speed limit's 25 on that road. So the speed limit to me seems right. Seems to me as if the entire neighborhood is tuned in to the phenomena of safe driving. So the, the, the culprit, if anything, are visitors or um, service deliveries. And um, I think that should be the focus of our interventions. I don't see speed bumps as a solution. My biggest concern is um, there's going to be more requests, more and more and more requests. Right. And, and there is a little bit more of a noise component when you go over them. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's subtle, but if you hear it every day over and over again, whether it's squeaky brakes or the little thump when you go over, then you get somebody complain about the noise. Um, can't win. Uh, also, really. do, do we have speed bumps as an additional cost? We have all of it from when we did East Shore. East Shore. They, they, were, they, were, they were in for two weeks before they were. Yeah. Okay. Th those are probably too steep to, I mean, they're, they're effective because they they're effective. <laughs> uh, and that's the whole thing with any traffic calming device is to be effective, it's got to be able to change behavior. If it's too subtle of a bump, people say, oh, that was not so bad. That was at five, and now it's at 10. Well, 15 ain't bad either. And before you know it, it's got uh, no effect. The ones on East Shore, they've got your attention. And the, and, and the complaints there were, and you mentioned safety for bikes, and it was also pedestrians. They said, you know, where's the guy gonna go with the baby stroller? Well, I don't know if a baby stroller on any road is really good, but that was one of the complaints. Yeah, no sidewalk. Yeah, but, well, we don't have any. So. But if those speed bumps were a safety concern, is we're going to have the same issue with bikes on that road as well? Very well. So are we, are, is there a sense for us to even re keep hold on to those speed bumps? Right, yeah. yeah. Well, you use them for bumpers. Or can they be, I don't know, trimmed or shaved or something? They can be repurposed. They're uh, hard, hard rubber. Hard, hard plastic. Yeah. Hard plastic or rubber? Chief, Chief, you got any comment on this at all? On speed bumps? No comment? Parking barriers, yeah. I understand and I've heard everything, and my comment having some friends that were former UPS drivers, my guess is as soon as you put those speed bumps in, UPS is that at a little higher speed, and he's repacking his load in the back, yeah. my guess is he's going to slow down. And as one of the board members says, probably two weeks after that, 
we're going to be that back out there pulling them up. So are they effective? Absolutely. Will they get the point across to the uh, delivery drivers when their load shifts because they hit it at 25 miles an hour and it rattles their cage and half their load spills to the floor? Yes. Will it ultimately uh, fix the behavior? No, because as soon as those speed bumps are gone, the behavior will return. Gotcha. Okay. All right. What I'm kind of hearing here is there's a, maybe a possibly a couple steps could be taken here. One is to have those people go and notice saying, hey, you got a violator there, get the, get the, get the plate, get the truck, whatever, and turn it in so that'd be something we could follow up on. And maybe even put that automated sign, or even though it's, it'd be a low number, I, it is effective because people think that it's actually a video recording and it's not, right? It's just a comment. Well, don't say that. <laughs> it's not. We all know that. But that's the, that's the first impression you get when you see it. I know say, oh, yeah, it's going to record everything. Well, maybe the one that he, that he got, it yeah. does. But anyway, um, if there's no more discussion, we should uh, so, figure out what we're going to do. Yes? Um, are there any, like, children at play signs there or anything like that? Would I didn't notice the people. No, I did not see any. I didn't notice. That would be Do we have would, some of those available, Tom? We, yeah, we can definitely get them. Yeah. yeah. At a cost. That, that would help with a little bit. Yeah. Gee. So it, it's not going to make a difference for them to record a license plate in a time of day and record it to us. They need to call yeah. Amazon. Correct. They need to yeah. call yeah. the post yeah. office. Yeah. They, so they can do that. They want to do some yeah. signage. Maybe they want to put out slow children at play. Maybe they want to say, we report reckless driving, speeding to your employer right. at each beginning, things like that. Start with some of that signage in their yards. Well, and everybody, if I can, everybody on the road seemed to sign that petition. Yeah. So everybody should be all in. If I, yeah. let's, 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 let's put up a ton of signs. Let's, yeah. let's do this to really let them know, you know, I mean, it's right. almost doing some Right. Some what? of those orange flags will get their attention as well. Yeah, those are kind of <laughs> nasty looking. Uh, right. The thing about the only reason I bring up I'm yeah, the only reason I bring up about the report and get it to us is a lot of people they may have a complaint about it, but they they won't take the time to call in or find you know UPS or or FedEx or whatever. We we certainly could, but uh, again once. A couple of those guys get reported that, that they'll stop doing that because they'll lose their job mm -hmm. uh, okay so uh, I'm thinking these peripheral things should be tried um, so we need a motion here to consideration uh, installing speed bumps we need a motion on this up or down someone I make a motion that we, we do not go ahead and install speed bumps at, at this time and in hopes that people in, on that road We'll try to do a little due diligence and and with some signage and phone calls and, and some other options. First. Okay. Do second. we have Barb second? Any further discussion? Hearing none on the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. And can we ask the police chief maybe to put the speed sign out there? What well, we have the speed sign. Oh, you mean the, yeah. the automated one? Yeah. How long are you going to keep the one up where you got it now? <laughs> Uh, we usually leave it up until it goes dead, which is about 10 days, and then move it uh, somewhere else. It. I think it's over on East Shore right now. It is. Okay. On East Shore. I would say after you bring it in next time, set it out there for a 10 day just to get a read on. I'm yeah, interested in a number of vehicles that really go through there, you know. Yeah. Count. So, okay. All right. Uh, Authorize Attorney Mills to research state and county regulations on county road ATV UTV use. I asked this to be put on there because I, I did get the same and have the correspondence with Walworth County uh, about this, and they, they said, uh, due to the fact that the town roads in our town are allowed for ATV use, their interpretation and the way they wrote their ordinance said that if they approve it in our town, it's automatically proven, done. And I talked to a couple other county administrators and they say, no, it may be their road's jurisdiction, but it's within your authority to regulate, you know, uh, use on all roads, okay, in your town. 
So there's a, there's a difference of opinion here. There's also on how the ordinance that the county wrote on how that is to be interpreted. And rather than us guessing what's right and what's wrong here, I, I thought it'd be best that we authorize Turn Mills to research that to make sure we know uh, what, what is right, what is right. We can designate ourselves which roads we want ATVs on. Mm -hmm. However, I do believe county roads in the 35 mile per hour zone um, would allow for ATV use in those sections. In terms of posting, if we're not going to allow county roads to be used as an ATV route, we have to post them that this is not part of the town ATV trail, if you will. Well, we have to post either yes or no, yeah, either way. Yes. Way to go. Right, and mm -hmm. and the state statute says, regardless of speed, that's another question. Then, in other words, and and John asked the question: How many roads are how many miles at fifty five? Whereas one point two miles on J, and there's three and a half miles on L. Okay, so there's four point seven miles at fifty five, and the statute says or at least the information we got from the Walworth County Administrator was regardless of speed. I don't know, if I, heard, I heard that answered both ways. So I think we need to know, the Chief needs to know, and the people who requested, you know, the ATV on county roads, we all need the answer of what is the right answer. So do well, we- Well, I brought well, the statute okay. here. And the part I highlighted under signs says that for allowing ATV use on roads, it says signs shall alert motorists that all highways within the town, village, city, or county have been designated as all terrain vehicle routes mm -hmm. except where otherwise indicated. So that would be the signs as you're heading into town. Mm -hmm. Then it also says the town, village, city, or county shall, which means they don't have any discretion, they have to do it, erect signs as appropriate to indicate highways that are not designated as part of an ATV route. Okay, well the information we got from the county says we don't have a say. Mm. That's, mm. What I, that's what I heard. We don't, don't have a you, say. We don't have a say on whether or not those roads are on a town ATV route. Yes, we certainly do have a say. Okay, that's the that's the that's the route. You you maybe talk. not in the thirty five mile per hour zones. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I'll have to. Who at the county were you speaking? Well, I, I talked to uh, the administrator, Liberta. Who did you talk to, Todd? John. Who did you guys talk to? Richard Huff. Richard Huff. Okay, he's the highway commissioner slash public works. That was the guy director. that Alberta couldn't get a hold of when, yeah, when we were at uh, Waterford. Okay, who did you talk to, Todd? Same guy? Same one, yeah. Richard Hall. I want to know. Okay. I guess I just have a question because I, 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 I still believe that we should be util, using the county our county roads. We already have established our town roads. And if we're going to go through all of this, is it because everybody's vote stays the same type of thing? I mean, like, <coughs> should we, you know, is it something that we take into consideration before any motions are made? I don't know, I think the people in the community voted for this at our annual meeting. They voted yes. Typically everything that we've done in our community since my short time being here, if it's yes, we usually go forward. If it's no, we typically don't. I'm, I don't know, I'm not understanding. Now we're gonna be okay, you can on the 35, but then we gotta post it on the 55, and then we're gonna turn the corner and go around. Is that before we go, before we- More signage. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, before we go through all this, I guess it's great to have answers, but if or, nobody's, I mean, if nobody's vote changed, I guess that's what we do, but why are we doing that? Okay. Well, why are we doing this anyway? It's okay. just to know how to sign it or post it or, well, first of all, we already voted last month right. to not sign it, which means right. that was no. So there is a discrepancy on, 
us here, will it change a vote? Yeah. To me, if the county uh, and the state statutes say we don't have a choice, that answers the question, doesn't it? I don't know. Do you not want it or do you want it? Because well, either way, you've got to post it. it but is it, not, is it posting it because question. we had to post it? Was what I was hearing last month. Okay. That cost and the DPW. The cost that. already has been. But, but that's what I was hearing at our meeting. That's what all. was brought up last what month. I, what oh, I yeah. know of it. So yeah. either way, if we have to post it, so does that mean, well, if we have to post it anyway, then it's okay? Mm -hmm. Or is it because it was safety concern? Or, you know, I yeah. guess that's where yep. I'm trying to figure yeah. out. Right, right. And the annual meeting, by the way, was for town roads, no county roads. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. But in note that the county in was already in discussion and anticipation to do that. Yeah, yep. they were. Jean. After the last meeting, I got a couple of calls in the office. So they voted this down. Does that mean that we can't write on county roads? I said, no, that's not what the board's decision was. The board's decision was that we were not allowing our DPW to place the signage. You can interpret that however you choose. It was not to say that those roads were not going to be open or closed, but that our DPW was not going to be posting the signage. That is what the motion was. That's what it was. And the other thing was so, that you know, Clay Montez, of uh, course, worked the boat launch down there. There were people saying that the board rescinded the use on town roads. That had nothing to do with it either. So we Jeff's did nothing. Point, Last month was saying we're not having our DPW place those signs. It wasn't saying we weren't opening it up. That was the motion. What I recall is I specifically asked that question. If the roads are not posted, does that mean that the ATVs and UTVs cannot ride on it? And I believe I thought the answer I heard was yes. Because I said, then why are we voting on, on the signs? And I was told because if the signs aren't there, they cannot ride it. That's well, what I recall. To me there. I, I just repeated what the motion was and what the board. That, that, that's why I want. That's why I wanted an answer, and, and that's why I put it on there. Mm -hmm. I think we need an answer on that, and that will answer our question. I think you need to post where they can ride, and you also need to post where they cannot ride. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because what do the signs say today, Todd? Doesn't it say all town roads? All of these roads are ETV, UTV roads. Right. And you have every end of route and at every yeah, spot all of, the you know, that it's getting at. Them, but talking with Rich Huff, in the 35 mile an hour area, it's like coming from Highway 20, coming this way, it's 35 until St. Peter's Road. We have to post them regardless. Okay. okay. So now it's going to be putting a, a start and stop at Highway 20 and a start and stop at St. Peter's Road. A start and stop. Oh, here by the Elgin Farmer, another stop. It's going to be more signage. It would be more. And on L. And on L, yeah. Right. And on J.J. Because there's false signs that need to go up. Right. So right. here there's the EP and a I don't know. I guess in my question to get more directly was, I'm more than happy to make this motion for Attorney Mills to look into this or because we're pretty sure that we have to sign this either way, just on, we do. Just on what we're reading and this mm -hmm. little research, do we go ahead and try to, to make a vote whether we allow it or we don't allow it, just to know what signs? You know what I'm saying? Is, right, do we, are we placing are, signs only are, are for we, the 35 mile I think, area? I section? think we'll get an answer from our attorney on that. Because to me, I'll make that's a motion to attorney Mills to research state <laughs> regulations on county road ATV and UTV use as far as signage. I'll second. All right, we have motion and second Jim. discussion. I just told you. So, right. Jim, what do you, <laughs> could you repeat what you're saying? You're saying that we have to do the signs regardless. Yes. yes. Okay, so then. You post you where you're allowing the usage and you have to post where you're not allowing usage so if you're not allowing on county roads in any area that's over 35 you need signage that says this is not you know part of the town's atv road right and, and the information we're getting from the county is saying you don't have a choice i i want to know that sounds to me like there's a big discrepancy there I think the what he wants is can the county tell us that we have to allow ATV usage on county Correct. highways? Correct. Despite the speed limit. Correct. 
Correct. Regarding because they whatever the speed is. Yeah, correct. Okay, any other discussion? Yeah. Are we talking strictly county? What about Highway 120? No, it's state. That's a state. No, so this county. that one is? It's a state road. No, no state, no federal highway. Okay. Uh, and so it's County L, E, S, and J. And I've had a lot of numbers. So I mean, all together, it's uh, 7 .9, 11, 12 point two miles of road. So, okay. Uh, on the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. None. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, new business. Consideration of petition from residents on Bell School Road for rustic road designation. Actually, it's it's on two roads. Uh, yeah, Hilburn Mill. Hilburn Mill also. And let me find that. Did a bunch of research on that, and as well as I got mileage on those also. So the, the whole deal on rustic roads uh, is we don't have a choice, or we don't designate them. The, the committee, the state committee, uh, will act on that. They'll come and look at it, and they'll say yes or no. Um, and. How it started was, uh, there's two ways it could start, a petition from the uh, people that live on the road or the petition could come from the town board. In this case, it was a petition by the residents of the roads. And the law says that we may hold a public hearing. So that's our first question, is whether or not we'd have a public hearing. And I think that'd be kind of useless because pretty much we got, I believe, you said like 90% of the people on those two roads already signed a petition both for the speed limit and the rustic road designation. So I don't think we'd necessarily need a public hearing and we're certainly not going to do a jurisdictional transfer because what tell the county that these are now their roads well, number one they wouldn't take them and number two we wouldn't give it. You know. So when you look at the um, the actual statute on it and you know what are the rustic qualities there that's the first question and there are some I mean it's farmland including the last dairy farm in the, in the town, uh, Honey Creek, you know, crossings in the, in the mill pond, then the DNR wetlands overlook. It's rural residential with a lot of, you know, mature trees. So those are the things of saying that, you know, it's got some rustic qualities that the committee would consider. But it's not necessarily unique or distinct. And uh, really only three quarters of a mile of it is low volume. You could argue that uh, most of this, this whole closed loop is uh, not low volume except that one section, uh, uh, the western terminus of Bell School Road. So when you look at the miles out there, Bell, that's the other question we have to answer is Bell School Road uh, from Highway 20 north to its terminus is 2.8 miles, okay? And Hilburn Mill Road if you want to just a loop, where it's just a section that's south of Bell School Road, you know, that would, you know, uh, add uh, seven tenths of a mile, so that'd be three and a half miles. Or if you take all of Hill Run Mill, now you're talking about 4.3 miles, but it's not really a loop, but that would be not for us to decide, that would be for the committee to say whether or not they want the loop that starts and ends at Highway 20, or they want that spur of Hillburn Mill that goes up to what? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's our question here is, uh, the first question is, do we want to do a public hearing? And I, like I said, I don't think that's really needed here because it's a May and we have most of the people, correct? Right? And we're not going to do a jurisdictional transfer, so we don't need Walworth County involved here. And I think it's got merit to make the request. Um, again, it's got some attributes that they would probably consider. You know, so I think it's it's worth a shot. The advantage here would be that that would allow us to reduce a Bell School Road to 35 because we can't really do it without the rustic road designation. Hilburn Mill is already at 35, all of it, so there wouldn't be a change there. Uh, and then the last thing would be if we do submit this, I would ask that Ken and Michelle, you live on the road that if the committee asked for some pictures or a little write-up that you guys could work on that, that'd be all right. So that's where we're at. So what do you think of the public hearing? Not required? No? I don't think so. Don't think so? No? And uh, so then it's just a matter of 
submitting a request, and it would be, I believe the statute says it'd be a request from the town board. We give them the limits, and we request it to be a rustic road, and then they will come and look at it themselves, or they'll ask for pictures, and then they'll rule on it. So we don't have any rustic roads in the town. Um, several towns in the county do. No, the last one, I did some research, and the last Walworth County rustic road to be submitted was the in the town of Lafayette on Route 120, a two-mile uh, section between Peck Station, or at Peck Station, between <coughs> County Highway A and County ES. And I couldn't find the date that one went in, but that was the last one that Walworth County And there's started. some down by Town of Lyons, and right. Town Geneva had some. I believe even Snake Road maybe a rustic. Like three altogether in the I, county. How many? There's like three altogether three? in the county. Okay. There's some double D down by Burlington. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if, if the request comes okay. from the board, it has to be in resolution form. Okay. Which means it would have to go on next month's agenda. So if we vote to submit this, we'd have to uh, uh, notice for next month to uh, have a, uh, a resolution uh, requesting rustic road designation for the whole the whole works. Is that what you're thinking? Okay. Again. Um, Around again. There's Highway 20, there's Dell School Road, comes north, northwest, and west. And then to complete the loop uh, to come back to Highway 20 would be this section of Hillmill Mill, which is another 7 tenths of a mile here. This section here, I guess it would call this, yeah, that would be a loop, but this also connects to our county truck, which is a one of the requirements, so we could do all, all of them, and that would be 4.3 miles. So that's another question for the board. All of it, as the request from the petition came in, or just the section of Hilburn Mill that's south of Bill Street. I think you have to do it as the petition came in. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, allow Attorney Mills to make a resolution to provide a so we can put in an application for this rustic road for all of the roads that were requested okay. in the application. Do we have a second? Second. Bill Rooker, second. Discussion? Any none on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion okay. carries. Okay, so that'll be on next month's agenda. All right. To lower the speed on Bell School? Well, these two are kind of tied separate. together. Uh, the the request on the, the speed limit already is on the one section that was requested was this three quarter mile here, narrow road. Right. And or whatever. Uh, I believe that's still 45, right? Correct. Right. Uh, and the, the spacing we've, we've seen on the, the warrants. Didn't get there, and Ken looked at it. And said, "Well, maybe you could make the interpretation that it, w it would be." But I, that'd be something I would like to look at after this rustic road thing is uh, done. So we'll we'll act on that. And uh, I don't even it, see it listed. It's, it's not on here. On yeah, that was uh, the petition had two 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 questions, uh, but one really I mean one enables the other. Uh, yeah, if we have, have a, if we get a designation, then it allows us as a board to to lower that one on our on our own. Yeah. We can't to consider it. Yeah. To consider it. So, okay. Uh, next one, uh, I think Kim, you put this on here. Authorize the attorney to amend ordinance regarding time limit on public comments and placement on the agenda. The same. You want to explain? Um, that was just a matter. We had, I think, attorney English was here. That you know, he had to search through all of the committee reports, so we were thinking that we could move public comments up before the committee reports. Okay. Instead of down. All right. Yeah, we had. If someone has yeah. something they want to address, like yeah, we had, needed on um, the planning commission, okay. they could say their piece at that time in the beginning and wouldn't have to sit 
Yeah, and that was more than attorney English. It was several people that that had a you know, wait around. But we also have you know our uh, people that attend here, and like I said, the last several meetings we were close to four hours, and we're at two now, and we're in pretty good shape here. But uh, that would could potentially shorten the meetings, but not really. But then John brought up a good point during his public comments, of saying, "Well, then you couldn't comment after the action." Well. You could do that. I mean, the comments. Are you, you, you know, are proposing just one public comment since yeah, two? Yeah, five minutes. minutes. At, at five minutes, increase the time that someone has to speak, but yeah. they can address what's on the agenda or bring a separate request to the right. board, right. and then. All right. All right. I don't know how much time that would save. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, five to seven people, even if they speak at both public mm -hmm. comments. Set. Uh, yeah. sessions at three minutes. Yeah, I, I don't think, yeah, it, it might save a little bit of time, but basically it's more consideration for the people that there, come and have to sit. Yeah, that's, it, true. that's why I wanted to move it up. Mm -hmm. There are many municipalities in the town who don't have public comments at all. Oh, that's correct. That's correct. And actually, not have to be required. Yeah, right. yeah. And actually, but, I mean, we've always been more than accommodating, more so than any other municipality in the yeah. That's for sure. So I think one time in, at the beginning, okay. can be done with it. That would require a change of the town code as well. And Correct. that's why it's which we're gonna, which authorized we're, attorney to amend the Which we're going to have to do anyway because our agenda in the code still has communication. Communication committee on there. So we do have to do that too. Um, I don't know. Um, actually, there was a request for exactly what Kim put on here year ago or whatever. Just do it like the village. And he said, well, we're not the village, okay? But there is a method there, madness. And in you know, my Tri Troy Alliance meetings with these guys, I'm finding out that rarely does a village meeting go over an hour or a town of Troy over 45 minutes. But and the village meets twice a month. They do meet it's twice a month. Troy does once. Yep. Yeah, but still, uh, you know, uh, half our time. And I've been accused of letting people ramble on too long and let everybody, you know, speak their mind and there's, that, that's still going to be the same thing no matter what we do. But the point is correct is that the public has a right to witness town board action. Public comments aren't required and we've always had public comments. As a matter of fact, I don't know, we went from one to two at 10, 15 years ago. No, that was just recently. Those no, the two. The two. The two, yeah. Yeah, the ordinance had two. We had, were down to one. Right. And when it was reviewed, we went back to two. Two, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I could see the, you know, the rationale here. I agree with Jim that it's, it's not really going to save time. What it really is doing is giving consideration for the people that don't have to sit here for you know, hours to, to get to, you know, a time when they could speak. Now, we're, we're two hours in right now. Um, and I think we were at an hour and a half thereabouts when we were up to the first public mm -hmm. comments period thereabouts. No, we were at an hour and 38 minutes when hour, Attorney Mills hour was 38. authorized to research the state and county regulations. Right. So we would save basically an hour and a half for people that would come to sit here. Right. But I'm fully aware that, you know, in effect, you know, it's six minutes to, to five. But the request actually did come in. But they're doing four minutes. You Let's could, just give them four minutes. Or well, that's, stay at three minutes. I did Dale Carnegie. If you can't make your point, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Then that's you true. don't even need to stand in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we Joe, need to discuss this some more. One, one question or one position I have on it, because I, I, I would speak in favor of this proposal. In that it's Essentially, it's a public comment period. We're not supposed to interact. We're not supposed to engage. We're not supposed to listen answer to answer questions. Done. We're just—it's an opportunity for citizens to comment, preferably on the agenda items, but on anything. Correct. And I think we owe it to the electorate to do that after the meeting or at any time. We're readily available for telephone calls, emails to talk, talk with our constituents. Um, Twenty-five years with uh, my previous employer, municipality. This is the comments were always at the front. Current um, a committee assignment they have on Walworth County Department of Health and Human Services is the comment period in the front. Um, 
This is a, this is a, a unique situation that I've experienced as a town supervisor having two citizen comment periods and then late in the meeting. I, I think it works well to allow the citizens a chance to speak early, say their piece, and then they can leave whenever they in whenever they choose. Barb? Um, I would like to see it moved up. I think before the committee reports is important. Um, I don't think I want to remove the second comment towards the end because that gives them the opportunity, but I, I'm torn. Okay. I would agree. I would think maybe we, you know, do it if in a phased approach. Maybe I definitely agree with moving it up earlier, but and maybe leave the second one. I think there's maybe less comments on the second one. That True. Do it in a phased approach. If, if we're not getting second comments, then we can remove that in a few months as well. Okay. Chad, any thoughts? Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think moving it up is. You know, I know we have a, a few people that have been here early I think that is favorable to them uh, when they don't have anything to do with necessarily any of the other stuff on the agenda but I don't when I got on there was one and we made it to and I feel like I don't know I guess I guess if we take it away now and it becomes an issue we can we can always bring back a second one if there's maybe if there's that demand um, for it. you know I know I know it's been difficult because there's been a lot of very big uh, situations and things that have gone on in the last few years, you know, with the town. So it has made things longer. But uh, you know, maybe maybe we give it a shot, and if it comes to be such an issue that maybe we, again we could always bring it back. Okay. You know. Okay. So if I could ask that we I call the question and make a motion. If no other discussion. If there's no more discussion, please. Uh, make a motion that we restructure our current agenda format to include one citizen comment period af af befo immediately before the reports of committee or immediately after the clerk's treasurer report and that each citizen comment period be limited to four minutes. All right. We have a second to yeah, that. I'll second that. Four minutes, okay, Jad, second. Okay, discussion. <coughs> I, um, I, my discussion point would be, I agree with the one period because that satisfies the requests in effect, but to go from, in effect, six minutes to four, I would like to see one five minute period. That would be my point of discussion, one five minute period. You can't say that. Well, that's Didn't point. Did you ever take Dale Carnegie? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. Uh, again, that's my discussion point. Discussion, further discussion on the motion. I mean, I could live with the, with the four, but I think the five would be more generally also accepted. Also, something that could be amended in the future. Could be, could be. All right. Any other further discussion then? All right, because okay, the motion is to uh, move up the. Uh, public comments period have one of them and it would be uh, probably no, he, the said, motion he, was he said after the after clerk report after, report report after report committees. okay that makes sense I got, I'll make sure it was in there and it was listed as four okay uh, on the motion all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed none motion carries and if that doesn't work we can, like I said, we can always amend it. All right, so now we should, uh, well, we didn't authorize Jim yet to, right. to actually do the, to amend the ordinance. What we did is say what we we're gonna do, right? The motion was on what we were gonna do, but now we have to authorize Attorney Mills. So we need a I motion. I make a motion to authorize Attorney Mills to update the ordinance regarding our board meeting agenda and the placement of public comments. All right. Second. All right, Barb, second. Do we, do we want to add the, the, the additional change to eliminate? That's part of the 
Yes, you should probably make that an amendment then that happened in one motion. I think we might make it that motion. I don't think it's a friendly amendment. I don't, I don't know Robert's rules well enough to know. Okay, Ed. Well, and technically, motion. it's not noticed. noticed properly. It's not in there. So, what we're going to do So, I can change the public comment section of that portion of the code, but I wouldn't be able to eliminate communications committee until you post for that next okay. month. All right. Okay. All right. So, no amendment then. All right. So, uh, we need a motion to authorize attorney Mills to. Uh, That's what we did. Okay. We have the discussion is done. Yep. Any more discussion? Seconded. Any more discussion? Who seconded? Fire. No more discussion. On the motion, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Okay. Turner's report update on Bell School Road damage. Yeah, I, I contacted the homeowner. They, in turn, forwarded my letter to Custom Grading out of Burlington. And I received a call from, I don't know if it was the office manager, saying, hey, they forwarded my, your letter, but they didn't forward the photographs that you attached to your letter. So she swung by my office and I gave her copies of those, uh, of the road damage. And about, well, a couple days later, on Friday, I uh, received a response indicating that, you know, they think they can make repairs that are necessary for maybe doing less than what Stark Paving had suggested to Todd. So I forwarded to Todd to weigh in and say, you know, do we allow them to try again? They're offering a year warranty and I, I, what I got out of it is they're claiming that their repair attempts that they tried previously <coughs> would have worked but for how cold it was at the time that they did it i, I don't know so i, I defer to well there's that. two parts that go ahead and say yeah. your part yeah. I, I read a letter today that jim ford and he um i wouldn't mind giving them a second chance i know they're going to be cheaper than what uh, start wants just because they worked worked on it before they know the situation um, depending upon the type of repair they want to do yeah. So they're going to try and do exactly what they did the last time. Say, no, yeah, if they come out with a, a weed burner and try to do a surface heat on it, number one, if it didn't work before, it won't work now. But if they use an infrared heater where they basically heat up a large section of it, it's got a chance. It has, it's got a, it's it has a chance. Especially if they're going to give a year warranty on it. Yeah. It, it actually looks worse now than yeah. with the repair that they did, than the original. Yeah, I'm not sure the time of the year. I mean, they, they said November, and I thought you said it was earlier than that, but I don't remember when they were repairing that. But if we allow them to take another crack at it, it's still going to be to our approval and satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the answer is, you know, kind of hearing is, at least the recommendation is, to give, let, yeah, let the contract. You would hear in July or August, you have to be warmer, but given that your warranty, it'll also give us a winter. So do we need a motion here? I think we should. I'll make a motion that we let them have a second attempt, but if anything in the, with the one-year warranty, but it has to be to you know, con satisfaction. Con yes. satisfaction on it as far as repair. I'll second. There, we have a motion, second, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Todd, right. did you want to contact that uh, Bob Cordes? Bob Cordes, yeah. We just need to have them sign something like this. Okay, that's fine. We'll give you the second chance. But the one year warranty is signed here. Well, we'll need something. Yeah, something. We already know one year warranty for sure. Or whatever. Yeah, okay. Get something from yep. them. Yeah. And they'll, and they, if they're going to do it, they will do it in the hot portion. Uh, if we give them enough time now, it's going to happen. So, all right. All right. So we're good on that. Okay. Next is resolution. 2023-4, it's a resolution approving the tax levy amount for paving and administrative costs for Sherwood Drive road work and borrowing for the expenses incurred are the same. It reads, 
Whereas under Wisconsin statute section 82.25, the town board of the town of East Troy may levy and collect a tax for limited use, private and parentheses roads. And whereas the town board of the town of East Troy had authorized a tax levy for the above stated purpose at its special town board meeting held on May 23rd, 2022, as evidenced in resolution 2022-6, and whereas the 2022-6 resolution indicated that a future resolution would need to be passed to determine the actual amount of the tax levy, and whereas the paving on Shoreward Drive has been completed and the cost thereof consists of the following, $122,151 for paving, $1,449 for administrative costs, including the time of the town clerk slash treasurer, the supervisor for the Department of Public Works, and publication costs. And whereas the town board hereby authorizes the town clerk slash treasurer to levy said taxes upon the residences of Shorewood Drive to offset the costs associated with the loan, with a loan, in the amount of $123,600 at 5.20% interest with First Citizen State Bank of Whitewater <coughs> over five years, and whereas the quote, public, uh, public purpose, end quote, allowing the town to undertake this borrowing is met under section 67.04 sub 1 sub B, Wisconsin statutes, which defines a quote, un, end quote, public purpose, um, as the performance of any power or duty of the issuing municipality, and whereas section 67.04 sub 4 states that the legislature shall find that contracting of debt <coughs> under this section for any project constitutes a public, constitutes as public <coughs> purpose, now therefore be it resolved, one, that the town shall borrow the sum of $123,600 on the term set in a five-year loan instrument due no later than five years from the date of the note is executed for the financing of the above referenced items with said principal and interest to be levied as a direct annual irreplaceable tax upon all properties on Shorewood Drive in the town and establishes a debt service fund as required by section 67.11 Wisconsin statutes. Said note shall be with First Citizen State Bank of Whitewater. Said terms of the note shall include an interest rate of 5.20% in the date or dates of installment payments. See attached exhibit A for the term, rate of interest, and scheduled payments that is hereby approved. So we'll have to Pair exhibit A after this resolution is passed. Two, for the purpose of paying the principal of and interest on the note as the same becomes due, the full faith, credit, and resources of the town are hereby irrevocably pledged, and there is hereby levied upon um, all of the taxable property on Sherwood Drive in the town a direct annual irrepealable <coughs> tax. Pursuant to the limitations in Wisconsin statute section 82.25 and the years the loan is in existence. Three, so long as any principal of or interest on the note remains unpaid, the town shall be and continue without power to repeal such levy or obstruct the collection of said tax until all such payments have been made or provided for. After the issuance of the note, said tax shall be from year to year, carried on to the tax roll of the town, and carried in addition to all other taxes, and in the same manner, and at the same time as other taxes of the town, for said year's taxes on Sherwood Drive properties are collected. For there be, and there hereby is established in the treasurer of the town, if one had not already been created, a debt service fund, separate and distinct from every other fund, which shall be maintained in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 67.11. 
Within the debt service fund, there is hereby established a separate and distinct account designated for the borrowed funds herein, and such account shall be maintained until all the indebtedness evidenced by the notice fully paid or otherwise extinguished. Five, all prior resolutions, rules, or other actions of the town board or any parts thereof in conflict with the provisions hereof shall be, and the same are hereby rescinded, insofar as the same may so conflict. In the event that any one or more provisions of this resolution shall be, for any reason, sorry, strike that. In the event that any one or more provisions of this resolution shall, for any reason, be held to be illegal or invalid, such illegality or invalidity shall not affect other provisions hereof. This resolution shall take effect immediately upon adoption and approval in the manner provided by the law, dated this 10th day of July. There's no second meeting. I was going to say the resolution. <laughs> right. the resolution. Right. I move that we approve resolution number 2023-4. Do we have a second? Second. Bill Walker second. And as a discussion, I take it the uh, interest at that 5.2, the actual interest numbers are included in the 122-151 and the 14.49. The interest on the. No, the interest is on top of the loan. That's those are the principal amounts. Right. So what is the actual amount then? 123.6 at 5.20. Okay, so we don't have to list that number. It's at that number on top of it. Okay. All right. But in that exhibit A that you have to include? That, that would be the, the actual nodes or terms of the loan itself that oh. says 5.20%. When the payments are due, there'll be an amortization schedule. Right. But, but there's nowhere that we're saying what each resident is going to get charged. Not, in this yet. not yet. It has not been determined. Okay. That'll have to be. When is that done? I have the loan documents to be signed, then I have to divide it by the number of residencies. Okay. Then we'll find out how much goes in the deck. Okay. Divide it by five. Once you find that amortized amount. Yep. Right. Yes. right. That includes the interest. Right. Yes. Right. Any other questions? And do you need to specify anywhere like the 5.2% EPR or is it actual? Which will be part of this. That will be exhibit A. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone? Right on the motion to approve resolution 2023-4. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. The next resolution is 2023-5. It's a resolution authorizing borrowing pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 67.03 for capital projects, including road work, uh, parking lot paving, and police, DPW, and fire rescue equipment. It reads, where is the town board of the town of East Troy hereby finds and determines that it is necessary, desirable, and in the best interest of the town of East Troy, while we're counting Wisconsin, here and after referred to as the town to raise funds for public purposes, including borrow one million six hundred, I'm, I'm sorry, one million six thousand two hundred ninety five dollars to fund road work on public town roads and to pave the town hall campus parking lot and to borrow an additional two hundred sixty three thousand six hundred five dollars for purchasing equipment for the town police department, DPW, and fire rescue, in parentheses, East Troy area emergency services district, and whereas the town board finds and determines that funding the cost of the above listed items is within the mm -hmm. town's power to undertake and therefore serves a quote public purpose, end quote, as that term is defined section 67.04 sub 1 sub b wisconsin statutes now therefore be it resolved one that the town shall borrow the sum of one million two hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred dollars on the term set in a 15-year loan instrument due no later than 15 years from the date the note is executed for the financing of the above reference items with said principal and interest to be levied as a direct annual irreplaceable tax upon all property in the town 
and establishes a debt service fund as required by section 67.11 Wisconsin statutes. Said note shall be with First Citizen State Bank of Whitewater. Said terms of the note shall include an interest rate of 5.20% and the date or dates of installment payments. See attached exhibit A for the term, rate of interest, and schedule of payments that is hereby approved. Prepayment of this loan is allowed. Two, for the purpose of paying the principal of and interest on the notes as they become due, the full faith, credit, and resources of the town are hereby irrevocably pledged, and there is hereby levied upon all of the taxable property in the town a direct, annual, irrepealable tax in the years the loan is in existence. Three, so long as any principal of or interest on the note remains unpaid, the town shall be and continue without power to repeal such levy or obstruct the collection of said tax until all such payments have been made or provided for. After the issuance of the note, the tax shall be from year to year carried on to the tax roll of the town and collected in addition to all other taxes in the same manner and at the same time as other taxes of the town for said years are collected. Four, there being there hereby is established in the treasury of the town, if one had not already been created, that service fund, separate and distinct from every other fund, which shall be maintained in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 67.11. Within the debt service fund, there is hereby established a separate and distinct account designated for the borrowed funds herein such account shall be maintained until the indebtedness evidenced by the note is fully paid or otherwise extinguished. Five, all prior resolutions, rules, or other actions of the town board or any parts thereof in conflict with the provisions hereof shall be in the same are hereby rescinded insofar as the same may so conflict. In the event that any one or more provisions of this resolution shall for any reason be held to be illegal or invalid, such illegality or invalidity shall not affect any other provision hereof. This resolution shall take effect immediately upon adoption and approval as provided by law. I will note uh, there needs to be a change under two in the now therefore section. We're not dealing with two separate notes. It will be one note. So note. So what, just striking that S? Yes. yes. That's it? Okay. Yeah. And the 263, 605, that, it says police equipment, that includes the building? No, no. that has nothing to do with building. No. That's squad, EPW, okay. and the All right, we need a motion. A motion to approve a resolution number 2023-5, uh, authorizing borrowing pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute 6703 for capital projects, including Roger, parking lot paving, and police, BPW, and fire rescue equipment. Second. All right, we have a motion a and a second. Discussion? Yeah, and I, I I probably know all this, but so it was for the squ our squad that we're getting. Used to. I was just wondering what the right. other items were for. So the squad, squad and then the DPW heads. That chassis down payment that we have to put was like ninety grand. The chassis, okay. Yep. And, and then, then the fire and um, rescue was fire there. rescue capital expenditures. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? If not, on the motion to approve resolution 2023-5, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Okay, that should be it for you, Mr. Mills, right? Yes. Yeah. Let me see. Public comments period number two, anybody? Absolutely. Mr. Jones. try and squeeze in a few things here. Um, first off, for you to vote on changing the public comments period without hearing comments is kind of half backwards from my point of view. If you're going to take out public comments period, 
then I need, did you, did you ever read a book on, from Dale Carnegie on how to fill out a full packet? Because a full packet should be required so that we can understand what the hell is going to be discussed. I can't send you emails on something I don't have any idea what's going on. And there's nothing in the packet. And Supervisor Luker has brought this up numerous times as well. So before you start limiting public comments, I think you better start making sure the information is available. If I ran a public company like this and the shareholders out here were treated like this, I, it, it would never happen. It just never would happen. So you need to, you need to start thinking about that. I noticed that there's a couple of reports, the police report being one of them, that you guys get, I never see. I don't get it either. I don't get it either. So why is that? It's, it's information for the information. confidential. How many calls? How many calls we make? It's confidential. It's information for the board. We can, you know, uh, names of where they, where they okay. were called, that is not There's there. other reports right. that, that appear to be reviewed up here that you guys are reading along with people and I'm unable to do that. As the public, I cannot offer any commentary or uh, do any research. Oh, the, the second item is I s expect a agenda and a packet to be put out two weeks ahead of the meeting. If, if there's going to be less packet uh, or, or public speaking time, how, how do I prepare? How can I do any research? How can I offer any comment? Um, the last thing I have is uh, Potter's Lake. You made a comment, or, or uh, uh, DPW Shield. He, uh, he made a comment about a $650,000 pump station. Um, is that, would that be handled the same at a levy like the Shorewood Drive road? It would be through that sanitary district, and that's a separate yeah, entity. And, and I don't know if anyone has to speak to it, I would assume the sanitary district, just as I would for sanitary district yeah. three, I would levy that against just those numbers as a special sanitary yeah. district three and yeah. charge yeah. on their bill. Would it be over multiple years? You would have to speak with there. the sanitary district three board. Yeah. Two board. The two board, sorry. Two. Okay. Well, how do I, how do I mm -hmm. call the office tomorrow and I can give you that information? Do what? Call the office tomorrow and I can give you okay. that information. Okay. They meet monthly? Usually. Monthly, yes. Okay. John, you good? I'm going to go out. Right. Anyone else else in the room? Anybody else? While Attorney Mills is going to be reviewing the uh, ATV use on county roads in our township, um, there is money that the citizens will gladly pay. I've talked to 15 or 20 people, and they will be willing to spend 1200 1500 bucks to help pay to put signs. The people of this township voted at the annual meeting on town roads. We wanted the ATV use. And we would just assume that you would allow it to be on county roads. And that what the, the way the county road drafted their ordinance, I talked to Richard Huff and he told me that they drafted it so that the town would have to get involved and get some skin in the game. So that's why they drafted it in the manner they drafted it, is that is to provoke the towns to do their due diligence and get either signs up or get something on the books drafted ordinance wise to simplify the whole matter because right now it's a spaghetti mess what we have out there as far as this public comments go um you guys want to shorten the meetings up i come here every meeting i record the, meet, the meetings i put them i share them on youtube i share them on uh, uh informed citizens and i'm not complaining how long the meeting takes but this there's a pattern here the last three town board meetings where the town people the electors have been getting the short straw draw on the sticks. Uh, with the elimination of the communications committee, that's not what the people wanted. There were six, eight people, 10 people up here that were asking for it to be continued to keep transparency. We're moving in the right direction, we're making great strides, but why do we wanna pull the plug on it? That's wrong, and this whole thing now, because you're complaining about the meeting length, well, this meeting's moving right along. We're gonna be two and a half, three hours in, 
and we're just about done with the meeting here. Um, I think that you're doing the electors a disservice by shortening the uh, one to two and then moving it up because there's things that are talked about on this board that people want to comment on and have a say in and you're not allowing them to do it. And the pattern that this board has been exhibiting the last two or three meetings is going to really have an effect when people go to vote next election cycle. And maybe we need to start making some positions uh, elected around here that are currently appointed because you guys work for us and you guys need to be reminded of that once in a while. Thank you. Anybody else? We good? Okay, thank you. Um, licenses and special event permits. Second. And we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion to approve those operators' licenses? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Motion carries. Meetings? Um, July 18th, if I have this correct, is the next East Troy Area Emergency Service District meeting at 5 o'clock. July 19th at 6 30 is Blue Flight Memorial Park Board. July 19th is also the second. Um, Planning Commission for this month, July 31st, sorry that cut off there, but um, all property taxes or the second installments are due and payable to our county. I've already gotten at least two that the checks were made out to the county, but they mailed them here, so then I have to mail them to the county. Um, August 2nd and 16th at 6.30 is the Planning Commission. August 14th at 6.30 is the next town board meeting. August 16th at 6.30 is the next Booth Lake Memorial Park Board meeting. September 4th is Labor Day, the town hall will be closed. And September 14th, once again as a reminder, is open book. And October 24th will be the Board of Review. Okay. Jim, would you tell me again when you're going to be going? I am leaving on Friday the 21st. I'll be back in my office on Monday the 30th. Okay, thank you. Three Lakes? Yep. Okay, uh, I believe uh, we're just gonna pay some bills here, so we need a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Do you have a second? second. Michelle, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. No carries. And we're going to be signing bills. You're welcome to stay here. Watch us sign if you want. Okay.